different purposes for different de densities of ash of a dead fiend. And then you point that out to Vicar, who then reaches down with a vial and then extracts some of the um, the thicker ash as opposed to the thinner ash. And you guys can tell that there's some sort of magical essence to this, and you don't quite know how to use it or what its purpose is. But you do know that it's something. Um, just a little rewind here. I'm going to need another assessment check and extraction check for the tree that you guys took down. I don't want to just have to, you know, mm -hmm. have you guys have passed that up. So, and that was a that was plant, a, I guess that was so nature or survival. Nature plus one, survival plus five for me. Take it away, boys. New dice. Nice. God damn, plus seven. <laughs> They're a keeper. Seventeen. All right. Um, seventeen and a nineteen. No, no, no. he he got a nineteen. He, he got a nineteen. Okay, so I'm gonna need someone to make an extraction check. I'm I'm as de dexterous as Vicar, but either of us could do it. It doesn't go matter. ahead. Go for it, pimp. So you dex check to, yourself, correct? Yep, you just need to be it's the dex or strength. You can do either. Mm -hmm. Dex, please. Puppy. That is an. Oh, it's dark. Hold on. That is an 11 plus 4 is 15, 15. plus proficiency, which is 18. So the proficiency bonus is basically. Eh, it doesn't matter. Yes. Um. So you guys, the, the tree was not a creature that was a CR7 or above, so you still get a frail weave fragment, even though you roll high enough to get more, the creature wasn't strong enough. So you have two frail weave fragments in the party. Write that down, write Got that it. down. Yeah, so, I'll take it. Um, I just described the first one. How about you guys describe to me what this assessment looks like and what you guys take from this tree? Dave, do it. Some special bark, you say? Some KY and some latex gloves. <laughs> Shit. No, I just uh, borrowed uh, the uh, one of your cleavers and I stripped the bark slowly and delicately. And uh, now we have this weave of some kind. Cassian. Yes. The way that you're extracting this bark reminds you from back in your homeland when you had to do the gray trials and you had to learn how to extract sap from trees by wounding the bark. And it just brings that memory back to you. I have some experience with this. All right. So we will move on now. So you guys just killed Gideon. You have two frail weave fragments. Um, <clears throat> what are you doing? Have rest. I'm holding yeah. my neck like I was just playing hockey. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God damn it. I think, we've, uh, I think, we've I think it was on purpose. A, a rest. What did we do looting wise last time? Because we got some stuff. Was that from Gideon? Was that from the area? That was from Gideon. So you guys got a potion got or two and a shit ton of gold. But I don't know. Okay. Well, we got we a mean, bunch of gems, right? Didn't pause, we? everyone, if you don't mind. Um, we have three gems at 25 gold each. We have 87 platinum, a potion of fire giant strength, and an oil of etherealness. All right, you want to divvy up that platinum? Yeah, before we before we do the divvying and before we leave, maybe yep. we should uh, we should explore this casino a little bit. It's not that often we get our we get our hands on an empty casino, right, boys? I mean, you're welcome to take a look around, but if you think that someone like Gideon would just leave money laying around, I think you uh, might be mistaken. He was by himself, John. He could have been 
I mean, we should sure. check his office at the very least. I think that's a good idea for information at the very least. I have some conversations that I want to have with Silas and others. More information is always good. Um, he yeah. told Silas to leave. Vicar, I think you have some thinking to do, my friend. Supposedly, this man was the Veiled. That means everything you've ever done or worked for comes back to this demon. Was for him. And now yeah. he's dead. Talk about a a uh, a twist. No judgment here. I just think that we must probably be a bit more careful, especially around the Mind Weaver and the Mind Weaver's Den. I don't think it is as such such a safe place as we thought it once was. You may be right. I've had no reason not to trust the Mind Weaver up until now. I definitely need to talk to, talk to her. I think we need to talk to her together collectively because didn't she say at one point? I mean, she, she met with the Veiled or. I had a personal relationship with her. Oh, yeah. I can't believe that she would have let me knowingly walk into something like this, but you never know the influence that somebody like that has on people. Can't trust everyone you show your cloaca to. <laughs> you want to see it? No. I would, uh, <laughs> no, no pun intended, but I would like to play devil's advocate here for just a moment. We must consider that this person that we've considered, again, no pun intended, a snake from the beginning, the viper, it seems like maybe the issues that they were between the two were probably justified to some degree. The issues that the viper has with the underhand are of no concern to me. My issues with them are my own. Let's not forget, a lot of this is secondary to the main reason we started working with Alwyn, which is the attack in the square during the festival. Yeah. That's true. There's some other things that happened in that square that have my attention as well. We need to find out more like, about that sickness before it spreads. That sickness is... It's I, only going to get worse. It's not the first time. It's It first showed its ugly head, to me at least, about a year ago. Look, let's go check out Gideon's office mm -hmm. and let's get the hell out of this casino. We can talk about this later. Do we want to stop by Gideon's office? Right now? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah. we want to poke around, see if we I'm can't I'm checking find for any. traps every single step of the fucking way. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to need you to roll an investigation check for me as you get to the door of Gideon's office. Not I. We have a monk uh, that is very either. good at this. Hey, num -nut, where's... Num -nut soul. What's your investigation, pimp? Where's uh, the I'm, dude looking fuck? I'm a dexterous motherfucker, not smart. Okay, oh. so you can... Oh, is it Joe? And by Joe, I mean Kazu. <laughs> and also, <laughs> no. <laughs> no, yeah, my Joe! Investi my, invest yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my investigation is only a plus one. My yeah. dex is plus five. Plus plus Wait, plus it must be Vicar then. You you have a keen eye. Um, not with investigation. I can Fuck. definitely try it, but uh, it's not going to be good. Wait, are we all I... just dumbasses walking around? What the fuck's just going on? Just plus one to investigation. The old Kazler. Yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. Who you thought Kazler was? <laughs> we have found a glaring hole within our party. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. All right, well, well it's, it's not the end of the world. It's a 16. Okay. Fuck yeah. Just roll well. 16. All right, yeah, so you got you feel around the the perimeter of the door and you come across a small switch that is flipped in a certain position. You can clearly tell that this switch which is on the frame of the door is probably something you could easily flip as you are opening a door and in order to disarm a trap and otherwise something might happen. Okay. So can we hold the switch. Wait, wait, I investigated it, so I'll okay, put my hand on it, way. and I'll be like, you know, talking about all of us being stupid, some of us do have some brains, and I'll just flick the switch. 
All right, you flick the switch and you hear yeah, it click within it. the lock. And the door explodes. And then I'll kind of back away and I'll just like gesture towards the door and I'll be like, after you. I'm going to kick open the door. I'll go first. <laughs> okay. All right. So you go to put your hand on the doorknob, Cassian, and uh, Sid kicks the door really hard. Please. And uh, <laughs> go ahead and roll a strength check for me, an athletics check. Uh, strength. Six. Yeah. He kicks the door really hard, and then you open the door for him. <laughs> um, making your way into this fairly luscious room. There's lots of um, like throw pillows, but they look very ornate. Um, there's not really typical seating in here. It's more so just like poofs and couches and stuff that are way overstuffed. Um, you do see a desk in the far corner with some notes on it. Are the pillows expensive? Yes. We're taking the pillows. Okay. We're not leaving this casino with pillows. <laughs> I'm going to say you can physically carry like two of the pillows before it starts getting intrusive to the rest of your carry. I'm going to go get seven pillows right now and show you how many I can carry. Zach, I'm oh, on <laughs> he turns into his change state so he can log <laughs> eight <Yeah>. pillows <laughs> walking around. <laughs> You see the Mitchell and Marshmallow Man. Yeah. <laughs> um, so right. let's go take Over. a look at the desk. the desk. I'm gonna peruse the room while they search the desk. Okay. As you peruse the room, you come across some expensive perfumes and whatnot, but nothing that's, you know, things that might get you an extra couple of gold pieces. Nothing that's gonna be crazy. I grab it all. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say you get roll a. D twenty for me. D twenty. Roll D twenty for pillows. Fifteen. <laughs> you get fifteen gold worth of random vials of different potions yeah. and pillows. expensive like lathers and lotions and whatnot. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so what are we what are we looking at with this desk? So as you proceed, I'm not going to make you roll an investigation here. Most of the notes are just on the top of it. You see notes from Silas. Um, they are titling in rather uh, good detail what you guys did, where you went, what times you were there. Um, and then you... And I saw him zero times. Yeah. <laughs> you. I had you roll a shit ton, but he was also rolling stealth against you. That's well, Oh, I had shit rolls, too. There was a chance that you could have spotted him, but you didn't. He was rolling pretty good, but you were also rolling like dog shit, so... Yeah, I yeah. was. I was. Um, so, yeah, you, you see a lot of those notes. You also see Jeez. notes from other people within the underhand, some that you're familiar with, Vicar, and some that you are not. Most that you are not, but... You don't see any notes from the Mindweaver or from Finn, or Ivy. Just people that you might know in passing. And a lot of them have to do with keeping tabs on Dolos. You see Dolos mentioned quite a few times, and that he's getting more bold when it comes to pushing in his attack. Um, they're expanding their regions of renovation rather well. They're still trying to figure <clears throat> out how they're making it look so legit, while still bringing in so much cash. They theorize that there might be something underground. Not literally, but also maybe literally underground going on. Um, besides that, that's pretty much all you see other than just some regular um, casino notes, general maintenance stuff. Is there a ledger? I'd like to steal it and put it in... No, I'm just yeah. <laughs> there are no ledgers here that are of magical nature. That fucker, and he pulls a dagger out and slams it into the desk on one of the pages detailing Silas's notes on us to Gideon Gideon was the head was the head of the underhand and is no longer and Silas we all met Silas or no Silas I yeah Silas him. was my initial contact into the underhand okay and also, um, something to keep in mind, guys, is that uh, there is no longer a veiled for 
the underhand. So there's a power vacuum here. So this might play out in some interesting ways. I know we already said that we were going to stay on our toes about that, but I think that this is another reason why we should. Well, we need to make sure we're allied with whoever ends up on top. That would be good. Long term, do we care necessarily if our travels take us outside Penting? Uh, the underhand's reach extends beyond Penting, though okay. admittedly in weaker... It's a benefit to us, without a doubt. Um, but then equally, we have so many things that we're that's curious about. Saying, I like especially it. really want to focus on this sickness. Yeah, yeah I like think that's a good idea. Just something to keep in mind. Our resources, yeah. It may be something to reconsider. Well, let's get the hell out of this casino before someone comes looking. Mm-hmm. And like find us like with a pile of ash. A little bit quiet as well, if possible. Yes. Kind of sneak out. Not Real quick, I'm going to divvy the gold. Everyone add 14 platinum and five gold to your inventories. Dave. Sick. Whatever we get with gold and loot, just take whatever I could take. Because I can't log in and just add it myself. So just take all my shit. Yeah, so take the gold. Four, 14 and 5. 14 platinum, 5 gold. There's a notes tab. Five G. Do Tom PP. <laughs> all right so what are you guys doing next we're sneaking out of here okay i want you guys to roll a group stealth check for me how do we do that we roll everyone roll stealth and then i'm gonna take the average of your guys's roll advantage do i have to roll twice or does it yes. do it automatically for me in D D beyond i don't know if it does it for you automatically just click it once and if it does it for you automatically great and if not click it again uh, nine. nine. I got a twenty-three. Nine, twenty-three, nineteen. Twelve. Twelve. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Don't let it, don't let it down. Did you roll a natural one? Okay. Yeah. Um, the no, only way it would have potentially affected you guys being seen is if you rolled a nat one. So thank you, thank your lucky stars. Um, you guys make it out of the back side of the casino where Cassian and Vicar you guys remember bringing some spices in with Maximus for the first time. Is there any and spice back there? There, Well, yeah, there's there's those whole barrels I'm still there. From the fill up, baby! Ain't nobody here to stop us now. All right. I'm topping up. Alright, yeah, you, you more than top up. I'll say you had your max of 15, right? I, had, I think it was but, 15, yeah. Yeah, go ahead and add like another 15. Okay. Gold? Hell no, yeah. no, it's just uses of his special tobacco. Oh, nice. Doesn't give him any benefits other than flavor, but it's cool. So, yep. dope. Um, so yeah, you got a ton of uses of that. I'd say you could even stuff your pockets with more than that. If you wanted to take like 30 total, that would be fine with me. Cool. But you guys make it out without really being seen. Vicar, um, as part of your super high stealth roll, I'm going to consider the fact that you just like you threw up a cloak to kind of cover the fact that you're bleeding profusely or had been bleeding profusely because that tends to draw some attention. So now that you guys are out, you weren't seen. Where are you going? You got to find some place to wash all this red off my feathers. We should, uh, don't we have yeah, a house or, uh, an apartment or some shit? Yeah. You want to make it back to the apartment? What time is it? Is it? Is it? What time of day did we? It's leave like off at? afternoon. Yeah, I mean, did we want to do anything else before we kind of like you're took bleeding? A little rest here. We should yeah. definitely get yeah, back. We should, like um, that. we should prioritize your well-being. Yeah. Yes. All right. Let's get back to the apartment then, and we can clean up there, and then. Nobody at the uh, Wounded Rogue will ask any questions either. Mm -hmm. yeah, maybe one or two of us can go get some food for everyone. But probably uh, probably not the few of us that are actually dripping blood on the ground. Yeah. 
You're leaving quite the trail behind you. No, no, no. It's all caught in the feathers. <laughs> well, no. But they're beautiful crimson. Yeah. These are Changing gone. by the minute. All right. So you guys are making your way back to the apartment that you guys rented out? Yeah. 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 All right. So keep in mind, it was like a 10 days travel to get to Marveled from um, Thornbrook and even longer to get from Marveled. Oh, I forgot. Thing. Not including the fact that you guys went to Thornbrook before you even went to Marvel. So it's been like not quite a month, but it's been a long time. Um I'm fucking beat. Yeah, you guys have been kind of traveling doing this whole thing. It it felt faster because we breezed over those days, but it's been right. close to a month at this point. You guys make it back to the apartment and you see when you enter, there's a series of notes that are left on the bed for you. We're gonna read them. Yep. yep. So they you call three... her one-eyed Vanessa. <laughs> Why'd you say it like a cowboy? <laughs> <laughs> we in the Wild West, bitch. <laughs> okay. So as you guys take a look at these notes, you see the first note says, "You weren't here, so I'll start to leave notes. Sorry for nothing to report yet." Number two, the note says, I don't know where the Viper is, but I've followed a goon of his where he keeps people he traffics, apparently. It looks like something that could be a point of interest. The third note that she has reads, The Viper is never unoccupied. He always has guards around him. He's going to be difficult to try to get on his own or take out. Number four, after several more days of studying his guards, I've found that he always has at least one spellcaster with him that is able to teleport him at all times. That's problematic. Fifth note, the fifth note says, I can't find his house because he keeps teleporting with the spellcaster to make sure that no one can follow him. Fifth note says, I think there might be something going on here. I'm going to get a closer look. The next note says, I think I pushed a little bit too far. They might be on to me. I don't think I'm safe. And there's no more notes after that. Six note says, Six don't dead, dead open, open inside. inside. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking hate you, bro. Well, uh, we got some good information here. She's done her job. Hopefully, uh, she just made it out and disappeared, but... Doesn't sound like that. Doesn't sound... Too likely. More going on here. Yeah. Quick question. Uh, just a point of note: you guys are posting the meme stuff in the actual AI images as opposed to the gifts channel. So. Yep. Just so we don't clog that whole channel up with memes. With your bullshit. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <It's some> bullshit. <laughs> All right. What was your question? Um, are there ways to teleport in general that? don't require a mutterance of a spell um roll an arcana check for me uh, <clears throat> arcana it, roll the 12 12 i'm gonna say with a 12 you know that at least most of them do and you're unsure if any don't require verbal okay. components Well, I may be able to uh, work something up to neutralize the spellcaster for a short period of time we so that they can't just teleport straight out yeah, if we I ever were to go for him. we do get him in battle, we definitely focus him first and try to hit him at the same time. Um, I think we can strategize as we, number one, recoup from what we just encountered and number two figure out our next step next step because we yeah. might find um just so everyone knows i i have a burning desire to go to alwyn and share uh, the fact that gideon is not a human and see if what he knows i feel like if we're going to work with him and he didn't know that we should uh learn his limitations it's probably good to tell him sooner than later so he can get good control of the situation yeah. 
Uh, it, first I'm sure he'd be interested in knowing that there is no more veil too. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we patch up Vicar and then we head over there before we do our resting for a couple of days. Yeah, agreed. I'm, I'm kind of well off ish. I I don't mind grabbing food. Is anyone else well off and wants to come with yeah, me? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing okay. I yeah, I'm okay. Do. I'll come. Okay, I'm good. Well, we oh. have to take. I have to take one after the. Well, uh, this fight. is after the fight, so we just yeah. fought. So even that, all of that resting would have taken place before the fight. Right. So now this is like post-fight considerations. Because I went into the fight with full Same. everything. Yeah. And now that we just so this takes place just after we killed Gideon. So like all your abilities yeah. that you use, you know, the health you lost, stuff like that. Oh. No, 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 we no, 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 that no. we did that in Pentine when we got back. Yeah. The, the, no, he was just recounting everything. We That's did why we've been gone so long, and yeah. like Vanessa left the notes. Yeah. Um, should we just leave the injured members of our group back at base and then just go and yeah. see Alan right now? Um, we we may want to. We should let I mean, you know no. sooner than later because, like you said, there's a big power vacuum, and that's a big change in the city. Yeah. I mean, I'm fine with it, just going there. I know that we're going to want food. Excuse yeah. me for everybody. Um, so I don't know how long the situation with Alwyn will take. Yeah, I mean, we can get food, come back, and then go. But, like, before we... Like, yeah. tonight, we should go. I'm, I'm cool with that. Okay. Yeah, we can do a short rest. All right. You so guys get all... some food. Yeah, so... take a short rest. That's... Yep, 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 yep. It'll be four... 13, so we'll do two. That is plus seven. Okay. Cool. So we're short resting, you said? I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, I just yeah. short rested. Yep. And uh, real quick, um, Hazor, did you level up in D and D Beyond? Level five. Yes. No. We all leveled up at the end of that fight. Yep. Same with you, Numa. Excuse me. I thought I was level five. Didn't I level it up? You hit level five after the Gideon fight. It is. Oh no! Yeah, does sheet. say four. So make sure Rip. we're top top. Uh, cool. So we short rested. That includes going out and getting food, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Cool. So now um, I'm cool with going out to see Alwyn with those who feel well enough to come. Yep. Although I would I wouldn't leave Vicar by himself. No, I'm good. I'm I'm good enough to travel now. Okay. So we'll just go as a group then. So we'll head out towards Alwyn's uh, estate. I threw a, kind of like hour. a summary of what the notes were in general for you guys to reference back to. All six of you are going to the study? Um, yeah, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. All right. I just put some fucking hemodent in there, and we're good to go. All right. That was a dentist yeah. joke that yeah. nobody yeah. understands except for Scott, but Scott didn't laugh. <laughs> I had no idea. Ha, 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 ha. There you go. Sorry, I am muted. I'm trying to log into D&D &D Beyond. Mm -hmm. this is Do you even hear what I said? It yeah, it's, hemodent. It's hemodent. Okay. It's hemodent. Yeah, I, I did couple. Like I will let you know. It's I a did hemostatic couple. agent for dentistry. Yeah, there's a blood clotter for. Yeah, for, yeah. I get it now. That's pretty good, bro. Oh. Those are the best <laughs> jokes are the ones that you need to explain. Mm -hmm. they, they really sink in the punchline. All right, so onward. Uh, okay, so you guys make your way to Claywall, and if you didn't notice, now is the time to take a look real quick. At the new Penting I know, just I called that out earlier. It looks are sick. they both this? Yeah, they are. Don't. So Josh and I spent a couple of hours redoing the city map to be like more than twice as big, and added two versions. So there's one version that gives you specialized locations, and one version that gives you districts. You guys did an excellent job. So awesome. yeah. So with the with the software we used to make the map, uh. I can't go back into this map saved and add more locations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add like a second legend under the one that's there. 
and just whenever you guys discover or pinpoint places you want to remember where they are in the city, I will just manually add in a second cool. legend to that map. Cool. Right. Can you go ahead and add our apartment on there? That'd be sick. Thank you. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you guys can kind of place where you want it to be because you were the ones that picked it. So wherever you want it on the city map to be, you tell us. Where's the richest? Kind of a well, I think kind of a rough area to be honest. The, though the yeah, north ward. Uh, didn't we put it on like the north? The north quarter is the nice part of town. Rose. The rocks. The rocks is the um the green area, which is also where the uh, wounded rogue and the speakeasy are. Yeah, we had, it, we had, we had it, it in that area, but like a little bit uh oh, further away from the. It's not like right next to the wounded rogue kind of deal, you know. Wounded Rogue is by the um, eastern the entrance map. into the rocks. Yeah, I think oh. we we're trying to get away, so if we can go in the western portion of yeah. the, the rocks, it, it looks pretty big. It looks sick. So, mm -hmm. All right, let me work on that right now while y'all are doing what you're doing. Cool. Yep. So from there, from the rocks, we head to Claywall. So you guys make your way to Claywall. It takes a little bit longer than you remember it ever taking. <laughs> Um, so you guys go to the entrance of Claywall and you see the same two guards that you have constantly been running into with issues with they look at you and you can see the one guy murmur something to the other guy and then he kind of smirks as you guys approach I'm gonna guess you know why we're here but let me just add some urgency to this um a lot transpired in the last couple of hours and it directly impacts alwyn and the well-being of the majority of the city i really think if he's busy he should make a accommodation to see us um give me just a second here boys uh i joe i will answer that question in, in a minute right now but i need to focus yeah on it's it. okay it's not urgent um so the one guard that kind of rolled his eyes when he saw you approach and then smirked when the one guy said something says, wait right here. I'll be back in a few minutes. And um, make sure you stress the urgency. Thank you. He, You can see him think about making what you would assume is a rude gesture, and then he thinks better of it and then keeps walking. Um, about five minutes go by. And you feel like this the hair on the back of your neck raise, and then you look behind you and a golden arch appears, swallowing you up, and you're immediately back in Alwyn's study again. We actually have a map. I built a map for this one. I don't know if Josh has it up or not. In Foundry? Yeah, in Foundry. Nope. Hey. Nice. Hey. Yeah. So... You guys step foot in here, and then I'm assuming you walk in. Yes. The second he sees you, you can feel a spell being cast on you. And you find yourself unable to speak for a minute. It's very pretty in here, by the way. Whoever made this map, good job. Thank you, thank you. Josh and I are tag-teaming the maps going forward, but um, that software that I was telling you guys about, we both ended up getting it, so we can That's put awesome. out much higher quality maps now. Yeah. The death like is a really cool. dark alliance, Baldur's Gate type feel. Yeah, kind of. Um, so he takes a look at you guys. Oh my god, I have the wrong document up. Give me a second here. Josh, where is it? Where's my notes? I don't know. They were your notes. Yeah, I mean, I have the ones I'll go with just the way I had it before and then add the other stuff. In. Wait, it's. Um, in the characters folder, and then, and then in his folder, and then my version is under your version. The just gotcha. scroll, right, literally just scroll down. Yeah, no, I I got it now. Um, could someone move me so I could get in on that action? <laughs> no. Alwyn looks at you as you guys are unable to speak, and he does not look very happy. And he says, of all of the things you could have done 
in my city, you chose to kill Gideon? Do you have any idea the scope of what you've done? You couldn't have just knocked him out or something? Not only did he serve his purpose here in my city, but now you've given the powerful devil a personal vendetta against all of you. He will come back for you. However, despite all the inconveniences this may have brought about, perhaps you all are still worth more than you appear to be. Killing a Rakshasa, even in, even in its weakened state, is no small feat. And he just looks around at you guys for a minute. And then he says, the Underhand is an organization that I allowed Gideon to set up in the city. The purpose of allowing this was that it served to be an equilibrium to the chaos of the Mafia created by Don Dolos. He looks at you, Cassian. He says, do you have any idea why I would do this? And you find yourself able to speak. Um... Cassian reaches into his bag and um, packs a pipe and lights it. I rolled a one for Stardust Leaf. Um, it carries a celestial aroma, imparts a sense of otherworldly sensation, enhancing the user's connection to the cosmic energies. Um, and he, I take it, Cassian takes a deep inhale and he says, Why don't you enlighten us? A nature check for me. Nature check. A 12. 12. Um, yeah, you know that devils and demons are fiends, and you feel like there's something more that you can't quite remember. But as you puff on your celestial pipe, you can, you get the feeling that there's more to it that you know you've just forgotten. And you feel your brain is cloudy, and the cloud is starting to be lifted, but before you can come up with it, um, Alwyn says... Devils and demons, even though they're fiends, have been fighting since the dawn of time. One is chaos, the other is order, and you happened to kill the one that actually puts order in place. It didn't feel very orderly when he slit my friend's throat. He looks at Vicar, and then he just looks back at you, like, face completely unchanged. It didn't feel very orderly when he put us under contract to do his bidding. Is that not what devils do, is put people under contracts to do their bidding? He cheated his way into this contract. He is a devil, you idiot. I of all, know, all, I of all people know what devils are capable of, but you couldn't expect me to just sit back and let a devil do devil things. I am not an idiot. I simply know how to play the game. And I won. He's finished. And if he comes back, he will meet the same fate. I am certain of it. You are so out of your depth. It's hilarious. You do realize I am that. not out of my depth. I am a gray. We spend our lives fighting these creatures. I will die to one eventually, and I know that, but they will not take advantage of my friends. Watch your tongue when you speak to a gray. The greatest house you of find demon fighters. You find yourself unable to speak again. And he just looks, he has his hands in his head at the, or sorry, his head in his hand at this point, just kind of like does that thing where you're pinching your bridge of your nose. And then he looks back up at the rest of you, says, what you have done is create a power vacuum that Don Dolos is going to take advantage of. Don Dolos, as I'm sure at least one of you knows, is a demon. Gideon was the devil that was the counterbalance to that dynamic. And now that Gideon's gone, things are going to get a hell of a lot more chaotic in my city. Gideon existed to have organized crime. Without that organization and someone to keep him in check, things are going to get difficult. The Rakshasa will come back for you, and he will not be happy. He will be much stronger because he's going to spend every minute he's being tortured in hell for failing thinking about you, all of you. If you have any chance at correcting this mistake, it's going to be taking down the Don. And to do that, you're going to need to get the fuck out of my city for a while and learn something useful. And I think someone, 
and he looks at Cassian, might know a really good place to learn from the best of the best when it comes to dealing with that type of situation. Do not go too far into the West. You'll meet an early grave or worse, and I might still need you. When he says that, his eye lingers on Khazar and Numan. Now, I need you to get out of the city for a while while I try to take care of this. I think I know where you guys should go. I'm sure Cassian can see to it. Please get out of my office. I need to think. Do we have paper? I leave immediately without saying a word. Do we have paper and pen? Like... Shit in my pants. <laughs> what were you saying? I'm sorry. Do we have paper and pen on us? Like, uh, just in general? Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to write a note and say we still have business here that impacts you, and I'm just going to leave it on the little uh, table near Cassian in the picture. Okay. He, You can see that Alwyn clocks you doing this, but he really does not have the time or patience right now to deal with it. He will get to it when he gets to it. And then we'll... I'm uh... going to leave. All right. You guys, as soon as you leave the room, you find yourselves able to speak, and the door that you guys just walked out of disappears and turns into actual stone wall. Well, I think we get the fuck out of the city, and Cassian should know where to go. What gave you that idea? The guy who made me not speak? You don't say. He's, he's true about taking down the Dun because of the power vacuum, but... I can't believe he'd be so upset. I thought we were doing him a favor. Look, it's not entirely... Er, he is not entirely not at fault here either, because he knew, and he and knew of our anything. contract. He didn't we did anything. tell him, yeah. He, he didn't say, hey, don't mess with... He, like, he gave us zero warning regarding Gideon. You think he's going to admit fault on that? No. I mean, I what did he want us to do, die? No. We didn't want to fight Gideon. Gideon fought us. Yeah, correct. So I I respect Alwyn, but at the same time, if Don Dolos is his issue, Don Dolos is in the city. We mess with the balance of things, but it's not entirely our fault. Let's get out of here for now. So we start walking, but Cassian, want to uh, want to elaborate on what happened there? What do you know? Cass Cassian is visibly shaken, like literally physical tremors as he's packing his pipe. Um. If what Alwyn says is true, that inconsiderate, disrespectful fuck, Cassian spits on the floor. We need to head north to my hometown. It is the single greatest stronghold that this entire world has ever seen against devils and fiends. There, there will be information and possibly an arsenal that we can use to restore balance to the city. But... We're not going to get the tools we need here. It will be in North Haven. North Haven. Cassian, you can still feel the effects of the celestial smoke around you. It, saying this and getting it off your chest makes you feel lighter and even more so than it should as a result of the smoke around you. Yeah, Cassian looks a bit like a crackhead right now. He's a little bit cracked out. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna like reach my hand out and gesture to Cassian to like take the pipe. And then smoke. Yeah, so like Kazar will take a puff and just like starts coughing pretty profusely, because he hasn't really done that before. And then he'll be like So we're fighting devils and demons now, huh boys? It's About not what I thought we'd be doing a couple of weeks ago. Um, preparing a spell, how does that work? So, as a paladin, you just choose which, which one you... <coughs> Sorry, I got something in my throat. That's as a paladin... Weed, baby. It, that, that's a little my guy. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I think paladins can choose spells and then they get to swap out their spells every level up. So uh, just pick the ones that are most interesting to you and it will stop you when you can't pick any more. So yeah, it, it should tell you and it's fairly intuitive once you start messing around with it. If you have any more questions about that or want to dive in deeper, we can set up a time to talk about that sometime during the week. Perfect. All right. So what are you guys doing? Where are you going? We have a very long journey ahead of us if we intend to go to Norhaven. I need to be honest with everyone here at this party that I have mixed feelings about going home. There'll be plenty of time to get into the details, but if we're going to head there, we have to make sure that we're prepared. Rations. What do we need for the trip? Yeah, how far? Warm clothing. It's We got that. It's called Norhaven for a reason. You think it's cold here? Wait till we get there. I definitely need a coat then. Didn't we stop and get that already? We yeah. have we have clothes. I'm poor. We will need to make sure that we have enough rations because the game is few and far between during the winter months. And when I say between the winter months, I mean it's going to take us a very long time to get there unless we can come up with something else to get there more quickly. Wonder if there's any sort of task we could pick up to do on the way from one of the guilds. Maybe they could even help us. That is a good point. Additionally, I know that I am not exactly happy with the man, but if this is such a big priority for Alwyn, perhaps he could facilitate our journey there a little bit more quickly. I, I feel like if he was going to send us there, he would have sent yeah. us there. I don't think yeah. we go back there until we have something more. Besides, Agreed. I think right now we're all a little bit a little bit ill ill feeling towards the guy. He didn't handle that situation the best. And him towards us. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. No, Alan's not an option right now. Well, we have some horses. If we take horses, I'm not sure. exaggerating when I tell you it'll take us a better part of six months to get to Norhaven. It's a very, very long way away. Can we get there by ship? I believe it's landlocked. I, I grew up there. I should know that. But uh, DM, I believe it's landlocked. It is landlocked. There is a way to get there via water kind of kind of close, but you would still need to go through the mountain pass if you wanted to do it that way. How long? I don't know. Journey by ship? The journey by ship would still be a couple of months because you got to go around the ice peaks. So I don't know much about it and I'm not sure if I have access to it, but... I, I could have sworn I heard something about the Scroll Keepers Guild being a teleporter's there. They have some sort of spell that can do it quickly. We could always go and check in with them. Might You're, be worth a little bit of gold. Yeah. Yeah. To save some time. Definitely worth it though. Yeah. You're part of that guild, sure. right, Kazer? I am. Uh, I'm not very far through it, but it's worth a shot. It's better than spending the next six months traveling. Because I have Agreed. a tiefling. All right, well, let's go check that out. And then uh, if all else fails, we buy some rations and hit the road. All right. Uh, you guys make your way to the Scroll Keepers Guild. You see Benedictus still there reading over his history books. Um, uh, the other person whose name I forget at the moment. Ophelia? Ophelia, thank you. Um, sees you. Is Ophelia? I thought Ophelia was the church. Well, I mean, she might mm -hmm. be the church, I forget. No, I don't think so. The tiefling was the... Um... The other one. That's alchemy. Is alchemy. Yeah. alchemy. Yeah. So no, Ophelia it's Ophelia. Is the it's Ophelia. Ophelia. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you see Ophelia, and then she greets you and says, "Hello. How how have things been going? You look terrible." And then she looks at Vicar. Her eyes get a little bit wide. Hey, I showered. Oh, you did. Okay, that yeah. was part of the long rest stuff. She's I thought you were at your throat. throat. <laughs> the second cloaca in your throat. I'm. I yeah. still definitely have a a. A fresh wound, but yeah, I'm not drenched in red. Yeah, it's still a, a pretty, still a pretty grisly wound. So she's still gonna look at you like that and say, "What happened?" Yeah, you know, so I'll say, "Alas, I'm I'm not one to lie. We've we've seen better days, but uh, so I've come I here slept. actually looking for assistance. Um, I heard that that maybe through the Scroll Keepers Guild, you have some sort of teleportation spell or something." Am I wrong with this? We do, actually. Uh, we have teleportation magics that are available for our 
second level guild ranking members and you would qualify at this point um okay Okay. There is a, there is a fee. I'm assuming. Can you cast um, uh, circle of teleportation? No. Okay. No, so I don't think so. One of our I I can cast the spell for you, but there is a fee of a hundred gold per person for the teleportation. Okay. And if you don't know, I I'm sure you'll figure out figure out how to cast circle of teleportation at some point, but. I will let you know now that the way that that teleportation magic works is there needs to be a receiving circle. If there is not, the spell fails. So okay. if you want to go to the middle of the desert, I'm afraid I'm not going to be of much help. But Cassian, where are we trying to go? North. Oh. North. Cassian North. lets out a very large exhale. Kind of runs his hands through his greasy, dark black hair. <laughs> DM, there would be a teleportation portal in the Grey Manor, I assume. There would be one in Norhaven. There would be one in Norhaven. There is one in Norhaven. But... Um, Ophelia, would you mind giving us the room just for a moment? Um, this is kind of where I need to operate, but you could go off to that room just over there. I thought I saw some dirty dishes. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing you're not part of the scroll keepers deal. That's a good motion right there. If you gentlemen would not mind joining me, I need to get something off my chest before I drag you into the dirt. Yeah. Unload. I'll go to the room. You guys all make your way into a smaller library section it looks to be on a very specific topic that none of you are particularly interested in at the moment and then you close the door behind you is there anyone in earshot no this is a f smaller section fairly niche study of some kind okay out with it cassian what do you got first i'm going to try and not be as long-winded as i normally am when i speak but please bear with me because this is probably the most important thing that i'm going to share with you in our time together up until this point we have made an oath to each other to protect each other and to travel as a group and to operate as a unit we are the kintsugi and we have each other's back no matter what it's not that i've been dishonest with you but it is definitely the terms are that I have kept things from you that I felt were a bit too personal to share, but if I'm going to take you to Norhaven, it's time that you know who I am and what I've been accused of. The Grey Manor is a guild that fights fey, fiends, undead, all of the unsavory kind in this world. We've been tasked with protecting the city of Norhaven, the House of Grey. And we gain stature amongst our peers and city members and the leaders amongst Norhaven. But the reason I find myself in Penting is because of two things. I'm trying to find the reason that my wife was killed. And I'm also running because I am the reason that my wife was killed. Her murder was blamed on me, and I had to flee the city. Since then, I have been on the road trying to identify who did this and why I have been framed. It's not clear to me the state of Norhaven, but I can tell you one thing matter-of-factly, that the Greys were responsible for keeping that city standing. Under almost a constant barrage of fiend, it was up to us to protect those who did trade routes, commerce in the city, along with common folk, clergy members, etc. But the last I left, the members of that city, the people who used to regard me in high stature, they wanted me dead. Everything I've known, every ounce of passion in my heart came from being a grey and protecting that city. And if I'm being honest with you, the true passion came from my wife, Aurora. And like I said, she was taken from me and I was framed for her murder. 
You have my word and my oath that I am not responsible for her death. She was my best friend and my partner. I could never imagine doing anything like that. Would that be too sloppy? Well, thank you, Vicar. I appreciate the sentiment, but I wish that you could step into my shoes and understand what it feels like to be chased down and hunted by the people who you cared about the most. Do you have any leads? I do. This black sickness that you see, it overtook Aurora's body as she lay dead in our marital bed. It's the only thing I had left. Even my parents, the ones who brought me into this world and had the heads of the House of Grey, the ones who took in the lost, the last, the least, and the lonely, the, the ones who protected the city, who took in the orphans, who made boys into men and women into warriors, they turned on me. Even they blamed me for the death of Aurora. The story of Aurora's death kind of strikes a chord with Sid, and as he thumbs the pommel of his uh, sword of vengeance, you see, like, that symbiotic ooze kind of, like, twitch through his skin, and he says, uh, if anyone's trying to get to you in wherever the fuck you're from, they're going to have to get through us. And I'll kind of walk over and put my hand on Cassian's shoulder and say, you know, I share a similar pain to you, Cassian. I'm I'm sorry about your wife. And it's horrible that they'd hunt you for that, but we're the Kintsugi now. We're a family. And if that means we have to keep you hidden or we have to find the son of a bitch that framed you, we'll get it done one way or another. If I have your long... blades... Oh, go ahead, Vicar. Uh, how long have you been gone for? To be honest with you, I don't know exactly how long I've been gone for because... The initial pain of losing Aurora was too much for my soul to bear. As you can tell, I have crutches that I use. Cassian pulls out his flask and his pipe. It has been a hard journey for me. If I had to guess, it would be somewhere in the year to year and a half range. It's been a long, cold, hard journey to get to Penting. I've been following a trail of black ichor. A trail of this pox, this sickness. Whoever is causing this is the one who took my wife and my best friend from me. I don't know what we'll find when we get there. I don't know if the city is in shambles or if it is still a haven of the north. Whatever it is, we'll face it together. But without God. <laughs> but without God. <laughs> Asian, so do you think when we go back there if you're not disguised you're going to be apprehended I don't know what will happen I can disguise him I think we're going to have to they don't know any of us but it Wild sounds thought. like Cassian's a wanted man Wild thought Cassian and you may not like this but would you be open to shaving all of the hair off of your head and wearing your mask until you want to be known. The masks are going to bring attention, aren't they? If he wears a hood and a mask, we can say he has lupus. It doesn't really matter if that they person. draw attention. No one can force us to take them off. Mm -hmm. uh, Cassian takes out his mask. And, and he kind of palms it over in his hand and he runs his finger along the gold the golden um lines that form the mask together if i have your swords then you have my whip and, we can and my stick together a new mod stick no matter how short i draw my rapier and put it out towards the middle of the group i'll just like create like almost like a fire rod that like, emulates a sword and put that into the middle take out the sword of vengeance with its uh minor green glow and the uh symbiotic ooze kind of running from my forearm down to the uh, cross guard in the middle i'll get a dart and just spin it in my fingers and put my other fist out and put it in the middle
Cassian unhooks his whip from his belt and holds out his fist, puts it on top. And then it's then settled. The Kintsugi goes north together. So we know how to get there. We have three options. Boat, cart, or teleportation circle. Um, if we take the teleportation circle, we should ask how we're getting back, if they can help us with that. Yeah, because I'm assuming it'll be the same price back. So do we have 1,200 gold between us to get there and get back? And that's if it's the same price. It might be more. Yeah. So I don't want to get stuck there. Yeah, um, you, by chance, do you know if uh, Northheim Helm have mages? Has a scroll keeper's Nor guild? Norhaven. Norhaven has a scroll keeper's guild. They have its own version of a scroll keeper's guild. It's not okay. called the same thing. Gotcha. If Norhaven. they have a teleportation circle, they must have mages. Oh yeah, uh, that's what I was gonna say. Well, I definitely know the way back, at the very least. So if we get there and we get stranded, it might be a long walk, but we can get I back mean, one way or another. How much would it cost to get a boat there and back if we didn't do teleportation? Is a boat yeah. faster? No. I will Cassian, tell you this. Yes. You would know that Norhaven does get... A, it does have an import and export uh, to the city, and it goes... If you're looking at the world map, it would be from the west heading into uh, Norhaven from the east and going through a mountain pass range. That is the way that you would have to come by boat. It wouldn't be as expensive as teleporta teleportation, but it would not be as cheap as walking. How much we, faster are we talking? We're we talking have... the difference Sorry. between... Based on like your estimates for what this could look like, yeah, walking versus walking boat. would be probably the better part of six months. The going by boat would probably be two to three months, and about half the overall cost. But well, food alone will make it more expensive than teleportation. No, I'm everything everything included. Oh, yep. okay. Going okay. by boat is half the cost of teleportation and half the time is walking. Walking, I is think six the. Months. Taking the boat probably makes the most sense, honestly. But unless we're uh, really pressed for time, but now one needs time to get things settled here, anyways. Yeah, I agree with that. The boat gives us a little more time to have Alan think things out and deal with the shit show we created. Who wants my to own, my own only concern. I do think we should take the boat, but my only concern is while we're gone, the sickness gets out of hand. That's uh, in, in terms of timeliness, our focus on going to. What the fuck is this place called? Nordheim. Norhaven. Norhaven. <laughs> Norhaven. Nor Nor hey, At this point, could you just throw the map up in maps so that they can get an idea of what the name is and what they might be looking at? Tony's the only one that's struggling with that. Listen. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're going to Norhaven to essentially learn some tips and tricks and maybe acquire a few tools to deal with Dondolos. The sooner we can do that, the sooner we can then restore whatever imbalance we inadvertently created, no thanks to Alwyn, and then return our focus to the sickness. That being said, I have some suspicions about the sickness that I think is appropriate for you guys to learn at this point. Um, it may not be correlated, but if it is, then it adds an additional layer of complexity to our journey if we take the long route. Um, when, when we first saw the Black Ooze in the square, um, that's when I had my first real uh, memory dump from the symbiote. And whenever a symbiote kills a, a living being in symbiotic form, the wound is covered in a black ooze, similar to what we saw in the square. 
uh, Cassie, and I hate to draw up old memories and painful ones, but was your wife murdered with a physical wound, or was she murdered some other way? I don't remember the details, if the DM would help me here. It was a wound. It was very clearly a wound. And if, as you remember back to this, the black sickness-looking thing, the sore, was coming and originating from the wound. I'm going to assume Cassian said that. So if that's the case, we may be dealing with parts of, of my history, or not mine, but the symbiote's history. And if that's the case, then um, you'll, you all will want to be aware of what, what weaknesses there are uh, to symbiotes um, if we end up fighting one. Fire and thunder. Good to know. That is good to know. We don't... So, I... Without actually witnessing something, we can speculate. I mean, there was a necromancer involved, which, I mean, by itself doesn't directly translate to symbiotes, but um, there was a wizard involved in uh, the symbiotes' reason for no longer being a part of that life and so if they have you know other wizards involved including necromancers it may be not too far-fetched to assume they're related but so what pressure does this put on the timeline if they're ramping up um their their presence overworld it it's gonna be bad i will say also that we have if we're in Norhaven, there's no sense in not gaining access. Well, at, at, at the very least, we're going to need to gain access to the Grey Manor, because that is where all of the information lies. You have a key? I don't have a key, but I have a way to get in. I'm sure of it. It's been sealed for a very long time, but this is my family we're talking about. I have plenty of places that we can think to look. And well, I know since that we're... There is... Go ahead, please. No, no, no. You finish. There is an armory. The Grey Armory is that of legend. I'm sure that there is books for our friend Kazar to read and for us to study and maybe some equipment that will help us along the way. Since we're being all open and honest here, there is something that I have to share with you guys, but I think it's probably best if we get out of the city first. I'm training. It, it, it might be, though. Be it depends when we get there. Yes, it is. It is fifty-fifty. I, I mean, go to the pub, have a pint, and wait for it to blow over. You never know. It's I mean, the thing is, Cassian tells us his story. Do you not side with him? So I think it depends who we meet. If we can find someone close enough, we can actually tell him the truth. Then, who's to say they won't be on our side? We have more information now than we did then, as well. We've mm -hmm. seen this sickness spread. We have. Sid, who has graciously offered the information that he has as well. Besides, I mean, you can't be the only one, Cassian, that's been framed for this. It's like the sickness is everywhere now, so... They might have a better understanding of it at this point, too, you yeah. know. Sounds like it originated there, or it was there earlier. No. no. I, I am going to take a vow now that's I will not be bringing up Sid's, pardon my lack of finesse here, your condition. It is your secret to spread and share. It is not mine. So if Sid wants to reveal that to someone, he's a big boy. He can handle that himself. Agreed. So the the decision to be made is how we get in there. Because 
two hundred gold for there and back is like pretty much everything that we have, I would imagine. Pretty much. That's for teleporting. Two hundred each. For teleporting. The boat would be cheaper. The boat's a hundred each, and then while walking, fifty each, just for food and stuff. Or what is walking? Well, we'd we'd have to buy rations for yeah. six months. That's what I meant. It would be in our best interest to you get there as fast as possible, just... and we can yeah. figure out how to get back when the time is right. Yeah. Okay, so we can um... something else real quick. Yep. Uh, walking, it starts to get to a point where hunting becomes difficult. But it's either Kai or Numa, I can't remember who, can actually yeah. gather, like, there, there's several months of travel where you guys wouldn't really need to buy any food. kind of food. Yeah, I, uh, I could hunt and get a shit for sure. So, hello. Hello. Well, decisions, guys. Let's get there quick and figure out how to get back. If it okay. is also the quick way, cool. If not... All in favor of teleportation now? Say aye. Aye. No. Sure. Uh, aye. I only have 55 gold, so... You broke, bitch. No. So yeah. then... Well, it was 14 platinum. Mm -hmm. So that's 140. 40. Yeah. Oh, I forgot that it was worth that much. Wait, so how much is it to teleport? A hundred there, a hundred back. So we'll get there fast, and then we'll figure out what to do on the way back. Okay. Yep. I'm okay with that. Okay. Yep, okay. agreed. Remove thy loin, or, uh, gold. Room, what? Gold. <laughs> Were you about to say remove thy loins? <laughs> <laughs> what remove remove thy gold. <laughs> Hold up. I'm paying for it right um, now. Okay, so we go yeah. talk to her, and we, we get in trouble? As we head to Ophelia, I'm going to um, linger at the back of the group and uh, put my hand on uh, Vicar's shoulder. Vicar, it is not safe for me to have this on me while we travel, but it could get you out of a pickle if you need to. But I need you to promise me that you will protect it with your life because this is my most prized possession. And he reaches into his tunic and he pulls out his crest and he pulls it off his neck. You have the stickiest fingers of us all, and I know that you can keep this safe. And I hand him the wolf locket with a picture of Aurora in it. I'll take good care of it, friend. Good stuff. Inspiration for both of you for friendship. <laughs> you. This is. Uh... We ain't shopping. We broke your shit. Only if you're teleporting. Well, <laughs> we are, yeah. All right. So, uh, you are you guys doing something else, or are you just going straight to Ophelia now? Do we want to have a night's rest? Are we trying to get out of I the city I think that that makes now? sense. We can do it in the morning. A long rest? Yeah. Go back to the crib. I'm okay with that. Get out of there before it rents do. I'm not completely unfucked. Do we want to sell the horse and carriage? Or... Because we're going to have to leave it somewhere, and who knows how long we're going to be gone? Nah. No, we'll probably, die. You could, you, probably just sell, leave or, it. you could probably sell them the horse max. They seem to be having a pretty good business going at the moment. Horseman. Oh, yeah, horse well, you know, run. used used horse prices are at an all time high. It's Horseathon month, guys. So <laughs> these horses partook in the, the murder of a devil. The September event is on now, boy. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ! Because <laughs> if we're gonna be gone for potentially months, I don't want to pay that in. Yep. Yeah. Storage. Yeah. So I think we probably try to you know. just cut the ropes and slap them on the ass, boys. Let's no, go. Well, bro, it's I an mean investment. all else fails, but we might we're in the get horse business. Mm -hmm. Yo, why don't we just chop them up and use them as some rations? Yeah, yeah. well, that was what, what was gonna wrong? happen yeah. if we, you know, <laughs> took them there. Honestly. <laughs> So can, what are we can we guns? can we sell them? 
Yeah, you can sell the horses. I'm going to the equipment tab right now to see how much. <laughs> no. So a riding horse, you guys bought two of them. They yeah. were 75 gold a piece. I'm going to say that you could probably sell them for like uh roll a persuasion check somebody as you're trying to sell the horse. Try to I'll convince me okay. as the DM. Why do I need to buy these horses back? These horses slaps horse on the ass. Are the <laughs> finest horses you've ever seen. You Roll can fit so much hay in these bad boys. <laughs> How about, they How about have girth. All right. They How about have this? Girth. You you ride on over to the next town and you come back and you get me some nice new clothes. Oh wait, you can't because you don't have a horse. You don't Look have at the these horses. The cock on this horse. Oh my. Look okay. at the balls. These Natural horses. Twenty. Slaps the horse on the balls. <laughs> Someone roll persuasion, just one person. I got a I can plus do it. six. I, I got a plus six. seven. Okay, go do it. Send it, Kazar. Jesus Christ, do you really? Nineteen, baby. Nineteen. Okay, I would have given you disadvantage, but you had some people making a good point and some people saying I stroke his balls. So <laughs> I was um, trying. I was trying. Um. So yes, with, the ball with a nineteen. I'm going to say that you guys can sell the horses for like 90% of their original values. Nice. Uh, you can get 90 gold each. Uh, no, no, they were 75 gold to purchase. Mm. So you guys get 140 gold back for the horses and he'll buy the wagon back for 20 gold pieces. So 160. 160 or 165? 160. 160 divided by six. 26 gold, six silver and six copper. Beautiful. And then we're all spending a hundred on travel. Are we just like doing the rest and then going? Or okay. Yeah. So we're gonna rest, right? All right. So you all guys rest. go back to your shitty one bedroom apartment, all six of you. Dave, wait, hold on, hold on. Dave, I uh I have my character sheet up, so I'm good on that. You don't have to like keep my shit anymore. Yeah, yeah. Thank you though. Yeah, 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 yeah. I added it all. So, how many hit dice do we get back for uh, long rest? the short rest? Half for a long rest. Long rest, you get half of your total spent hit die back. What if I have an odd number? Then we go with whichever one's less, because that's what we started doing last I time. I see. Yeah, we are long resting, correct? Yep. Okay. Long. So you guys get all of your abilities and all that nonsense back. It's just if you used any hit die, you only get half of those back. Cool. Perfect. That works out very nice. Jacob, did you get a second to look at the spell? Uh, yeah, give me a second here while we're doing this. Actually, you know what? It's This is a good transition point, so we'll take a little break here, and yes. then I'll look at that. That's good. I'm going to take 15 because I'm going to make a phone call. Yes. Yeah, I also need a break after you checked out. Okay. Right. Um... Spells. We'll say reconvene at nine. Okay. Melf minute meteors. Just seeing if the spell is okay to use, because some of the spells are. Yeah, this is a really good spell, but I like it, so I'm gonna say yes. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, Melf yeah. minute meteors, and it's a sorcerer and wizard spell. This one's strong. Uh, but it's not like game breakingly strong. It is strong. just makes my character have more things he can do on his turns, which I think is nice. Yeah, it's always nice to have better utility. Yeah. Okay, I'll be back. Yep. I'm gonna go take a pee pee myself. Um, Ophelia just kind of looks at you as a group expectantly. She doesn't know what you guys want to do yet. We want to teleport to North Haven. To the circle I have there. North Haven. Haven. Whore Haven. How about that? Okay. That, that was honestly closer than what you said before. Fuck this story. Let's go to Whore Haven. 
All right. It's like the fucking Mandela effect is different every time it, we it say is, it. It is now canon that there is a brothel in Norhaven <laughs> called Whorehaven. Yes. yes. Oh, I, will, I will add I it onto that. the map. I will, add it, onto the map. I will add it onto the map. That's where we're staying. Jacob, <laughs> Jacob, I need you to be explicit in e-girl voice when we visit the Whorehaven. Oh, I mean, would you want anything or expect anything less? I do not. <laughs> okay. That's, That's my idea. idea. <laughs> That's my idea. <laughs> So, as my friends were saying, we're trying to get to the teleportation circle in, in Norhaven, but I'm more specifically looking if there's a circle in the brothel no, known as Whorehaven. <laughs> Ideally, we go straight there, but if not, we will just take the circle to Norhaven. Um, she looks, bit, throws up his mouth. she looks a little bit taken aback, and her cheeks kind of flush for a second when you say that, and then she... Um, oh, I see you've been. She put... <laughs> She pulls up a different ledger from the podium she's standing at and flips through them, uh, fl flips through some of the pages. She says, "Please follow me," and then she heads off back further into the Scroll Keepers Guild. Going to horror even boys. Hell I'm yeah. assuming you guys are following. Giddy up. Yes. Yeah. All right, uh, Josh. Since the version, yeah. the quality of my hang on, never mind. I think I can do this myself. Bum, bum, bum. Are we saying that they've teleported there now? Yeah, you guys have teleported there now. I'm just so trying to open if you it up. look on the map, uh the letter J is the archive, then that is where you guys have teleported to inside the city. Letter J. Letter it's uh to the left of H above G area. Mm -hmm. Uh let the record show that Cassian was cloaked and masked before teleportation. Yes. All right. Sounds good. Um you guys I will also have my mask on just for I'm just always wearing my mask. Okay. You guys are teleported to the archives in Norhaven. And um, what you see is... Uh, give, me, give me just a second here, guys. I'm sorry. Yes, sir. The Grey Manor. Please. This cock. Whore Haven, Whore Haven. <laughs> yeah, I think we're missing a POI here on the, on the so, legends. Um, you guys hey. make it to update, baby. Look to the place, and you come across, um, Fidor Ivanov. Uh, Cassian, you would be familiar with this guy. You've seen him around. You know that he has fairly close connections to the Greys. He has copies of all the original texts that were in the Grey Manor, just in case something were to happen. Uh, so that's mostly what you know about this guy. Uh, he looks like a historian, and he's surrounded... Did you post a picture, Josh? Of uh, who? F Fidor. Fidor Ivanov. Fidor. No, no, I... Okay. Uh, Josh will pull the picture up pretty soon. He's an elderly dwarf. And he's always seen with a scroll or a book in hand. He has a fairly stern look about him, but he just seems like maybe you interrupted his studies. And he looks up at you as you guys teleport into the middle of this room with a large magical circle with all different kinds of check marks on the floor. And he catches your eyes and looks a bit taken aback. You see him reach for something within a drawer, and then he says... What is your purpose? We come in peace. He's a dwarf, knowledge. He's a dwarf. Um, <laughs> it's a small desk. Yeah. It is a small desk. We come in <laughs> peace. I Big don't man. need for alarm. Very well. I assume that you are part of the... Uh, he looks at you for a second. It's hard for me to place where you might have come from. It looks like you have different heritages within oh. your own party, so... where do we, we came here from the Scroll Keepers Guild in Penting. Yeah, I was going to uh, ask Kaiser. We are, we're actually hoping, once we complete our business here, that, uh, that you could help us find a way back. Hopefully through the same means. I can, I can perform these magics. That would not be a challenge, but... Um, 
Yeah, I should have guessed Penting. It's the biggest city in the world. It makes sense that it's a melting pot for people like you, perhaps. What is your purpose in Norhaven? We heard of a brothel, and uh, we're on a, a quest to experience brothels of all different cities. You see, I... we like to travel around the, the land and, and document these brothels. I need Making you guys some to... Other collection. One of you roll a deception check for me. I will. Go for it. What the fuck? Why? Bro, yeah. why? Why? I have 21, <laughs> baby! Why are we doing this? <laughs> what did you roll? 21. 21. He looks at you, and then he looks at your kind of fancy attire. The fact that some of you are wearing, like, eyes wide shut masks, and he goes, I'm sorry for asking. Um, enjoy your time in Norhaven, although you might have come at a bad time for it. It's never intimacy. a bad time to come. I... Stop! Stop! <laughs> no! Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, he looks at you all and says, you might not want to be intimate with everybody that you I would be careful in this city at this time, specifically. Take care what, of did, yourselves. Did Horhaven close down? Actually, yes. It is currently <gasps> inoperable. Wow. Did they run out of workers, or...? Alright, time to go home, guys. No. Yeah, how much is it to teleport <laughs> back? 600 gold <laughs> out the window! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not even one e girl. Damn it. No. <laughs> There's got to be a receptionist or a cleaner or someone there. We'll find someone, boys. Come on. All right. Uh, be careful with who you interact with, especially physically, um, in this city. I would shake your hands, but I'm practicing what I preach. Enjoy your time. Jokes aside. Goes... Jokes aside. Would you care to elaborate on that? There is a sickness that is spreading through the city. Sickness. See, we encountered a sickness in Penting, also. Um, is it black? The yes. Sickness. It is. We call the it the Black Rock. <laughs> Shut the fuck up! Please! Oh I will kill your fucking character. <laughs> final, final question. Um... This this black sickness um, is it sexually transmitted or I, I just wanna I just wanna make sure we don't know how it is spreading so we just encourage <laughs> keeping distances okay good to know let me walk out on the way out I'll say okay so no butt stuff boys <laughs> before I'll be the last one out and I'm gonna turn to the door real quick and ask are there any books you have that you might be willing to part with that are partic or particularly uncommon. General reads, nothing in particular. That is an extremely broad question. Do you mean sell it to you? Do you mean read it while you are within these halls? What do you mean? Um, sell it. <clears throat> there is a possibility. It depends on what type of book you are after. I will let you know that Books on monsters and whatnot are rather, um, well, since the purge happens, they have not been very common. But if you're looking for sexual exploit books, and he reaches behind him and pulls out a book of smut. And then... I'm going to hold my hand up. No, no, no. This is for uh, a, a friend back in Penting. Okay. You still have not given me specifics about what kind of book you are looking for other than the. It might Do you have anything be, rare or less likely yeah, to, I, to have been read? I I have plenty of books that could be considered rare, but I don't... What subject are you talking about? Let's go with uh, leisure. Leisure. So, sexual exploits. <laughs> <laughs> he gets the same book back up the top. Yeah, he, he, the book that he went to reach for brought out, then you said, no, 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 he reaches back for again after he put it back on the shelf. Wait, I, I'll, I'll walk over to him and I'll say, I'll, I'll kind of like lead him to his ear and say, look, I, I don't want to make this too public, but I, I do have uh, a certain eye for um, 
particular races. Um, do you have anything in here on, on demons or, or fiends? For sexual exploits? Just in general. Just in general. My imagination can fill in the gaps. I'm assuming you want something with pictures. <laughs> and he, <laughs> he goes back to the, the halls behind, or the, the books behind him, and he thumbs through a couple of different um, tomes. And he finds sure one of them. Like Most of them are there. just text based, but he does find one. Um, and he pulls it down off, off the shelf. It's got fiery, fiery red leather on it, uh, like it's been dyed to look that way with gold leaf inlay in the book. And he looks back at you and says, This book will run you about 3,000 gold piece. 3,000 gold piece? Do you mind if I just have a, a quick flick through to see if it's. Kind of what I'm looking for. This book is in very, very good condition. If you dis if you do anything to harm its pages, break its binding, you will be paying for the book. What if you flip through the pages for us? We'll just, you know, not touch it. I can do that. He takes okay. the book, he opens it very gently. This guy has, for a dwarf, who you would think is like big and like rough and tumble, this is much more of a scholarly guy who likes... He could be just as easily at home in a mine as where he is right now. He got soft hands, bro. Yeah, he got he got them soft hands. But so he no, turns the pages. The you see, empty. you see a couple of um a pictures of different fiends, and you see him very gently but directly thumb towards a very specific page that has to do with succubi. And he's like, I think this would be probably what is of interest uh, to you in this book. Anything yeah. in here on suck you straights or just buy? <laughs> he gently closes the book and puts it back on the shelf. Uh, did we learn anything while we were reading through that book? Guys, I spent hours on this backstory. You're shitting all over it. <laughs> yeah, you really are. <laughs> yeah, this guy passed the vibe check, though, that's for sure. Yeah, did we learn real. anything during that? <laughs> Just like this heart wrenching backstory, sob story. Like I don't want to go back home. You guys are like whores, whole oh, smut city, <laughs> <laughs> smut city. Oh my my oh friends my certainly God. know how to lighten the mood. Jesus. Uh, did you say that out loud? Absolutely fucking not. You're out of your mind. No. <laughs> I think that you said that out loud though, because you no, said I, that in I, the I, on, on, on my God, on God, on my cross, my heart's worth. I know. No, on Donda. I swear that wasn't that wasn't out loud. All right. You so you said on right. Donda. It's undeniable. Did we learn anything when we were reading them? Uh, you saw that succubi. Um, go ahead. You know what? Roll a perception check for me. Who was reading the book? All of us. No. no it me. It I, me. I'm shrunk in a corner. Tony, how how good are you at Two. perceiving things? Two. Then you Six. should probably perceive this book in particular. I will perceive the book for a yeah. strong. Did you say two? Oh, two. He read those words. What did you? What did you say? <laughs> he got a twenty. Two. I still didn't hear it. Eighteen plus two. Eighteen. So a total of twenty. Yeah. You you only saw the one page because one full page was a picture of a succubi, and an incubi. And you know that they're now called succubi and incubi, and they are technically classified as different things, although they have the ability to shape change into whatever gender they please. Mm. So you do know that they are considered two separate uh, devils, not demons, and that they, are, they can shape change and that they are very keen on... The bargaining that they do has less to do with souls and more to do with like sucking out all the physical physical pleasure that they can because that's kind of what satiates them. So we're just using logical reasoning here. An in you buy is the male, and then a suck you buy is the female. Correct. Because males okay. are in you and exactly, you know. exactly. Okay. Okay. I see how they figured out that naming convention. Oh my god. <laughs> it's easy to right, remember. Reset. Though. I'm reset not gonna button. Forget here, the I, reset button. <laughs> Cool. Amelia Damn. fall, you guys all die. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. like tap the table and just say thank you. That was helpful. Side note, different friend, much more wholesome, much more <laughs> non-sexual. 
if you did have completely different friend literally <laughs> amish if you did have any books that you think a busy person would enjoy reading that are uncommon i will come back we have business to attend to but if you could think of anything or maybe make some recommendations for the next time i see you i'd greatly appreciate it so i guess i'll say this in character so let me get straight you want a book of some uncommon rarity for a person who is too busy to read books too busy to read books for fun hoping to change that something educational but lighthearted yes i can put i can i can think about this thank you and i'm gonna just walk away i would like to observe where he put that three thousand gold book um he put it right back on the shelf amongst some others you can see a little shimmer when he puts it back mm -hmm. i just want to take a mental note of where that particular book is All right. as, as we leave uh, I'm roll, roll, him... wait no 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 yeah, yeah. roll a straight intelligence check for me vicar is that just a just d20 a d20 plus whatever your intelligence modifier is it ain't happening <laughs> put it out there a two. Yeah. Oh, he's a dumb boy. <laughs> this seems like a great idea. <laughs> Whatever you're planning seems smart. Great. Yep. I'm going <laughs> to roll a think again check. And, uh... I don't know. Maybe we use one of those inspirations you, you very recently received. <laughs> hey, no, I'm, I'm, it's just a thought. That's all I'm saying. You're just just keeping an eye on it. Cool. We are, we As we leave... Out. I'll just flick him like two gold pieces, and I'll be like, "Thanks for the, for the images." Um, he catches them, and just looks at them, and he looks very confused as to why you're tipping him for showing images. He but nice. he just he kind of nice. shrugs and pockets the money. Yeah, might be uh, a new business venture for you, showing images to horny teens. I think I <laughs> that will be. Illegal. I think I will be more satisfied with my books. <laughs> Well, those books, no doubt. I, I left that life behind me long ago. We're going to get a beer when we're done with our business. Yep. 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 You are definitely interesting people to have a conversation with, that is sure. Enjoy your day. You as well. The, the exit is, and he points you to where you guys need, would need to go to get out of here. So. All right. You guys venture back out into the rest of the city. So, wait, wait, really quick, not to uh, not to name drop here. Is there something else we can we can call our uh, our buddy over here while we're in the city? Something a bit more inconspicuous. Uh, hmm. Mr. Whip. Whatever you think is... I, my voice is very quiet, by the way. I'm very whispering, okay? Gentlemen, we need to keep in mind that I have the accent of Nordhaven. I will be very identifiable. Well, then pick a Nordhaven name. Can we call you Piper? Piper is fine. Piper Chapman. Piper Chapman. Okay. Humble farmer, Nordhaven. Or right, Big Pipe. Big Pipe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's actually so fitting. <laughs> <laughs> I have my pipe somewhere. Let me get it. I would love to see him walk away with his hood up and his headset and just rip his whole console off. Wow. Console. That's... No, I don't Wait. want it. I just think I would no, love to No, you said it. you wanted whenever, it. I I whenever, I Cassian, see it. whenever Cassian hits the pipe, you have to hit the pipe. <laughs> yes. I think, I think, this I think is big, good. Big I have pipe three is... pipes. This is... I'll use which one do you guys like better? I like this Depends one. on the roll, I guess. Yeah. I like I the the ones. red one is better. The yeah, red one is like a little uh, it, it, not not necessarily it classier, but it's more it gives more Cassian vibes. Yeah, it does. I was thinking too. It looks actually makeable in a medieval world. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So big pipe, it is. Where do we go from here? Well, big pipe, lead the way. Do we want to uh, try and? What? I've, I'm going to be honest with you, boys. I don't have much of a strategy here. I, it's. You want to scout out the manor and just see what's going on there? Oh, we're here for information. We're, we're here we to can learn. We take right? a walk, okay? That is Why all I'm committing that? to. We're let's going take a walk. To take a walk. Let's let's observe the surroundings and see what we're working with. 
Well, before we before we take Pipe back to the manor, which I think might be quite an emotionally challenging thing to do, is there anywhere else in the city you think we could get some information? Learn some skills, find some gear. Yeah, what specifically is our goal? What information are we after? Just on fiends just to, and, just to or are we looking for the against fiends. What about everything, the sickness? Everything really that we need to that. know is within the manor walls. But useful to find out about. Let's go for a walk then. I think our okay. target is the manor. We'll see. We'll see what we we uh, encounter on the way there, and once we get there. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a couple that Cassian would be familiar with within the city. I mean, it's still a fairly large city. Uh, even if you grew up there, like, it's not like you know every single street corner, but you're fairly familiar with most of the surrounding area, Cassian, so you could easily direct people. And that is what I do. I direct people to the places they want to go. The manor? Is, are we going to go see the manor? Is that what you want to do? Or do you want to start somewhere else? I think we should take a walk. Let's go walk by the, by the manor walls and see what we see. Okay. Walk it is, boys. Let's go. All right. So, I mean, like I said, it's a fairly large city, so you guys are walking for a little while. As you're walking, um, Kai, roll a perception check for me. That poor guy thinks we're whores. Thanks. That was 13. You notice an older gentleman in his 50s, maybe 60s, sitting in an alleyway as you guys are passing by. He appears very skinny and sickly. He's got raggedy clothes on his back. And he's got black sores all over his body. I'm just going to, like, poke him with a stick. Kind of like nod to the group and and walk over and try to exam try to examine the body. And he's alive. Oh, he's alive. Yeah, he's in the alley, kind of propped up against the wall, just looking completely destitute. So I'm instead going to hustle over and kneel down next to him and ask him, uh, "Sir, are are so you okay?" Before you get there, well, actually, you know what? Yeah, you get kind of close and you say, "Sir, are you okay?" And it looks like you shock him out of a stupor. And he starts backing, skittering away from you as quick as he can. He says, what the hell's the matter with you? you? Why are you getting so close? Do you have a death wish or something? This plague has already taken my family from me. Don't insult me by making it a joke. I'm going to hold my hands up and say, look, I mean you no harm. I just, I've seen this and you're the first person I've seen living with it. What's going on? You guys must not be from around here. I like can tell uh, you confidently you picked a pretty shitty time for a tourism trip. This plague started sometime last year, months ago. Um, with that fiend attack on the farms outside the city. Say what you will about the greys, but at least they kept shit like this from happening. The sores showed up on the dead bodies found from the attack, and it didn't take long for the plague to come down on the city. I was traveling for work in my. He just. He's not letting you talk. It's like this guy's sob story is just kind of coming out. He has nothing. I was traveling for work when my hey, wife. Hey, hey, listen, sick listen. I I get there's a lot going on here. I have some very direct questions. First and foremost, do you have any open wounds? He kind of gestures to like the sores on his face and arms, like these. No, like a cut or puncture of some kind. No. Why? Where did it, where did it start? The, the sickness? On you, on your body, where did you first notice the sores? First, I noticed a lot of pain in my stomach, and then it kind of just started popping up all around at random. I don't know. It just one day there were spots, and then they just started getting bigger. Do you remember what you were doing before? More you the loss of my family. Did they have sores? They died of it before I got home from my trip. And I assume you were in direct contact with them? Well, they were my family. I was gone for some months before I saw their dead bodies, but... 
Have you seen a, uh, what are they called? Apothecary? I tried to go to the Apothecary Guild, but they couldn't help. There was a, a man who came to the city some time ago. He goes by the name Seraphel, I believe. He says that he has some sort of thing to stop the sickness, but it's so expensive I couldn't afford it. So How much? There's, I don't remember. It's not worth it anyways. Everyone I loved is dead. I don't, I don't, I'm just waiting for it to take me at this point. Yes. Kai, do you have a vial? Empty? Sure. Can I ask you a very odd question? You're very odd people. So, I don't, I don't know. Can we drain one of these sores into a vial? Fuck no. Get to, just stay away from me. You're going to get sick from this. Don't worry about us. Well, do, can, do, you're going to go buy the antidote? You can afford the antidote for this thing? Do you know my net worth? He no looks client. at you with like your fancy red robes and your shiny gold mask, and he just looks. I suppose you could afford it, but I don't like being some lab rat. Something. I'm not experience. trying to do experiments on you. I just, with your permission, would puncture one sore, drain whatever comes of it into the vial, and leave you on your way with some money. Go ahead and roll persuasion. Persuasion. Is twelve. Twelve. Um. He. Yeah. He. He's gonna pass on that opportunity. He just kind of shakes his head at you. Is there a morgue, or somewhere that they collect the dead who recently passed from the sickness? <clears throat> Since the sickness started spreading, they just take the bodies out and burn them in mass beyond the city wall. Do they collect them somewhere on a daily basis or at any particular frequency? Just whenever they can find the body, they bring it beyond the city wall, and then at night they burn it like a is pile. It, is it just anybody, or is somebody or some group in charge of that? Well, the Greys would have been responsible, but they've stepped down. Would have? How recently is would have? Um, how much do you know about this place? It's cold. So not much. No. Do you know who the Greys are? Very familiar with the Greys. Their reputation precedes them. Yeah. I mean, they were good at monster hunting, but those bastards killed the biggest Atlantopist in the city. Aurora was nothing short of a goddess, but... Uh, I heard that um, the sun killed her in cold blood, and then they... They banished him, or killed him, or something, and then, since then, the Greys have had to step down. Is there a town guard in charge of the body burning, or a doctor? Anybody in particular that you could point us towards? Um, people from the Apothecary Guild, uh, usually, they, they tried to examine... Uh, the bodies, and they still are trying to come up with some sort of affordable cure, and uh, I th beyond that, I don't really know who takes the bodies and how, what that looks like. Okay. I'm gonna hold out, or like kind of play with five gold pieces in my hand and just say, you sure you don't want a little something for your trouble? For a little, uh, poke? The sooner the die, the sooner I see my family. Your gold does not tempt me. Fair enough. I'll leave you to it then. He just leans back against the wall with his head back down. Take it anyways. Kai, <laughs> you uh, want to take care of the old... No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, like, as I'm... As I walk away, I'm just going to kind of flick a gold piece to him without saying anything. It hits the ground next to him and he doesn't even look up. He doesn't and reach for it. He just leaves it there. I'm just going to walk back away and kind of, like, gesture to the group to follow. Um, we should 
possibly check the apothecaries? Wait, That's before we leave. Left, I'd before pick it we up. leave. Oh, no, no, no. I was about to say, everyone goes around the corner. <laughs> I'm going to peek back around the corner. Has the guy looked at it, or is he still just like... It's already gone. I picked it up. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> After... I waited for everybody to start leaving, and I picked it up immediately. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Kaiser, as you look back, you see that the old man has not apparently moved at all. His demeanor is exactly the same, but the gold piece is gone. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um... We should go to the apothecary at some point if you guys still want to walk towards the Grey Manor and see what's going on, but they may have information on the uh, sickness and the situation here. We're closer to the manor than we are the apothecary. That is true. The walls of what? The, the manor? The manor. All right. You guys walk towards the, the manor. As you start getting closer uh, to that area, you notice that there's a there's a shift a little bit in terms of the scenery and the feel. Cassie, and you would remember um, from your history texts that there is old Norhaven and new Norhaven. And old Norhaven, if you look at the... Josh, do you have that map posted of like the territories? Yeah. Okay. So there's there's sectioned off Old Norhaven is the small one. The really small one is Nomad's Nomad's Rest. And the larger one is New Norhaven, which has been built since the beginning of the city. But um Old Norhaven has more character to it. It feels more rugged, better built. Like it feels like this thing could take on a whole force of different kinds of creatures especially the closer you get to the actual gray manor, the thicker the stone becomes, the larger the walls are. Mm -hmm. And by the time you get to the actual entrance of the, the opening that would lead into the gray manor, you can see wrought iron gates that are very ornate that block your entry from actually going in. Or at least they would. The gates are actually open, so you could walk in if you wanted to, but you could tell that very clearly they are a layer of protection um, from anything that wants to come in. And beyond those are a set of very, very heavy stone doors that could also be closed. It's built like a fortress. Are these doors the open or ajar in any way? They're open. They're very large doors. They're like We're talking a space of like 15 foot to walk mm -hmm. through. Yep, gates and doors are. You can see the gray manor from where you guys are standing, but it's mm -hmm. a little bit off in the distance. Are there it's people walking little... around? Is there anybody walking around? Do a perception check for me, and you're trying to look like you're not scoping the place out. I assume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna need you to also roll a stealth check. A group stealth check, or? Yep. Group stealth. Okay. So, and then who's rolling perception? Nineteen. <laughs> 19. Yeah, it wouldn't be like a group group perception check, just a 19 for... Is that for stealth or perception? No, it's for stealth. stealth. I rolled a 6 for stealth. Okay. We got a 13. Woman. What are we doing first? Stealth first. Stealth first, because only one of you guys 18. is actually making the perception check. 18 for stealth. 18. Who else? Numat and... 7. Okay. What the hell? I'm sorry, I wrote a. Hi, it's down to you. Your your check could. Numat's rolling everything. his fingers along the cage. Nine. Okay. Yeah. You have um, disadvantage. He's a big golden dragon. Yeah. So you guys are not being the most stealthy. You are also an extremely motley crew. Half of you are decked out in these scary fuck off masks. Um. I. Who who was making the perception check? I asked the question so I can do it. Yeah, you go ahead and do that. And I'll, Cassian, is your head down trying to avoid attention, or are you looking at your family home? Is there an in-between? No. Basically, are you trying to keep your head down, or are you looking am, back at home? I am absolutely enthralled with the Grey Manor. Okay, go ahead and roll a perception check for me as well. 11 on my perception check. All right. Natural 19. Natural 19. 
you see in Frostfell Gardens, which is, you know this to be um, the garden of your family home. It is maintained to grow special herbs that are largely used in the trial of the greys that you would have to to use for one of those steps. There's different things to make potions and poisons within those gardens. With your perception check, you notice as you guys are clunking through the streets, an older woman's head pop up uh, through the glass that you can see. And she very clearly locks eyes with your party and Cassian, your heart drops through your chest. This is your mother tending to the gardens within Frostbell Gardens. She just kind of looks at you guys suspiciously because you're a group of six people standing outside her front door, essentially, wearing masks and robes and looking kind of... You you don't belong here. Cassian freezes and drops his pipe from his hand. I'm going to catch it. Go ahead and make a... Uh... Make an ac- acrobatics check for me, Alan. Or sleight of hand. Right. Your choice. Uh, they're both pretty good. So they're both sevens. We're going to get a uh, 19. 19. Very easy, especially since you're four feet tall and Cassian is on the bigger side of guy. Jobs it, you catch it. Um, with my 11, uh, anything from that? No, you don't even see her because she's she's wearing a color that blends in fairly well within the greenhouse that she's in. Mm-hmm. So it kind of blends around with the plants behind her. And then after that, Cassian dropping his pipe, is that note like does the party notice? Is that just inherently something we perceive or no? Yeah, I would I would assume that you guys all see that. Vicar caught it, so um, I'm kinda kinda like point like away as if I you know, I'm pretending to see something over here and um, kind of like nudge Cassian in that direction. And as we're taking a step or two, I'm just going to say, uh, what did you see? Cassian remains silent. I'm going to look for like a corner of an alleyway or something for us to kind of like collect and give him a moment. Yeah, easy enough. You guys find a place. I think he needs uh some of this, and I'll hand him his pipe back. He doesn't. Cassian doesn't light the pipe. He begins to chew on the end of his pipe. He's grit, and you see the veins in his hand. He's gripping his pipe very tightly. I can only <laughs> imagine what being here is like for you. But we all need to be on our on our game, especially since none of us have been here before, and I'm assuming a lot has changed since you have. Do you want to take a seat somewhere until you are good to go? So, quick clarifying question: Are you guys still very close to the gray menu, or are you trying to get some distance there? Um, I would say I'm, I, I I was imagining us moving probably like fifty feet away from the entrance. So, still very close. Mm-hmm. Cassian kind of shakes his head and blinks his eyes a couple of times. That is my mother in our family garden. Oh. Does that complicate things for you? We haven't spoken in over a year. She's the leader of the House of Greys. The Greys have stepped down from their position. It's hard for me to make sense of anything right now, if I'm being honest with you. And you did so in good terms. She's, she's the leader of the Greys. Where does she stand on the situation with your wife? She finds me guilty of the murder of the love of my life. I am at least the last that we spoke. This is a very complicated situation, my friends. Yeah, I can imagine. I am going to think tactically for us as best I can. I don't mean to sound uh, cold or non-sympathetic by any means. Um, It sounds like we should avoid 
Any contact with your mother for the time being? Is that that's up to Cassian. Is that that was in my question? Is is that something that you could manage in our time here, at least trying to avoid contact? The city was not like this when I left. We need to find a way to identify whether or not she has the same opinion as when she, when I first left. Maybe is, someone she doesn't know could talk to her? I think direct approach may be not the best idea. Does she have friends? Or do, do you know if she used to frequent a particular area with other people? Or is she more of a uh, do-it-herself type of person? For the sake of the story, I'm going to default to God here because I don't know what he's written and what he hasn't. So you would know that um, your father and the your father and what's his name uh fidor uh the guy that you the dwarf the guy that you met when you first teleported in your father and fidor are long-standing friends they have a very friendly relationship even if they haven't really spoken a ton it's more of like that you know that kind of bro friendship where you guys don't talk for like three years and then you reach out and it's like hey we should grab a beer and then you don't do it for another three months and then you do it and then it's like nothing happened then you go back to you know yeah, 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 yeah. Every friendship ever. Yeah, it's it's kind of like that uh, relationship between Fidor and your father, and you also know that your mother. Uh, what where is the person I'm looking for? Your mother is very friendly with a woman named Anya Roman Romanova. Anya Romanova, who is a jeweler who usually frequents the equivalent of the trade district in Norhaven. So I'm going to assume I heard Cassian explain well, those things. Let's, let's let Cassian explain or, it. Okay. The gentleman that we met when we first teleported here has a long-standing relationship with my father. And if he is still living, all things considered, I would assume that it won't be very long before he relays the information. They are not drinking buddies, if you will, but they... Fidor would notify my father of something like us. But he wouldn't know it's you specifically. No, no, no. Of course not, but our covertness here in the city is only limited for so long. We will mm -hmm. be outed eventually. My mother had a friend in the trade district who traded gems. Finer goods. I know that we have some gems on us. Perhaps we could go make a deal and set something up. I also have an interest in buying some jewelry, so that kind of lines up quite nicely. Um, What's our our goal here to get information from the friend of your mother's about what? About where, about where Pipe's mother stands on the situation, and if she'll be an ally or if she's okay. Gonna make yeah. things harder for us. And if she's not an ally, and then what? Then she's somebody to be avoided for this trip. Right, but we need to get in there, so... And We're either Kat... planning the greatest heist of all time, or we are amending our relationship. Okay, let's, start let's go the for the relationship. At the end of the day, she is your mother, Cassian. And I think that there gives us some room to work with. Depends on the family dynamic. A I'm a bit in... of a romantic, and I will admit that mother's love for her son is unmatched by nothing. And look, you definitely got your looks from somewhere, and your mom's a pretty lady, so... I will I could, fucking kill you, Sid. I could put the charm <laughs> to, to to lighten the mood should we need to engage with your mother in conversation. Is that Sid talking or the, uh, or the Sim? <laughs> there is no black ooze coming from Sim whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. only, only Sid that is white bricked ooze. up over my mom in a flower garden right now, Sin's, okay? Sid's got that white ooze going. Yeah, I'm about to say, there's no black ooze. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go. Spoiler alert, she then. could kill any one of you individually. So, <laughs> so uh, to the group, um, Kazar and I, funny enough, have a unofficial beer scheduled with Fidor that we could use to our advantage. And I have business with a jewel trader that I'd like to conduct, which gives us at least a reason for visiting that part of town. So we can explore those avenues. 
We well, can also... go to the jewelers first, and then and then go from there. I think that seems like a good lead. Sure. Yep. All right, Cassian, right. or uh, I the way. big big pipe. Uh, where where would we find a jeweler in these parts? I know exactly where to go, and I'm going to show you by going there. <laughs> it's Hearth Ward, Hearth Ward Market on the map. If you're looking at you. away from yeah, that. yeah, I, I I was flavoring, but yes, thanks. So, you guys start making your way down there. Hang on, I have something for this. Boop, 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 boop. Artwork? No, not artwork. Um, you see, as you start approaching the Hearth Ward Market, there's a guy that just is standing on quite literally a soapbox preaching out and exclaiming things loudly to a crowd of people who are basically just ignoring him or walking about their normal business. Um, the streets once full of life and playful children that would run barefoot. It's not here anymore, Cassie. And it's like a haunting stillness. Um, th these figures are just kind of hurrying along on their way. And they're walking with purpose, which is not unusual for Norhaven. It's a very uh, purpose-driven society, but it seems like the love of this town is lost. You remember that people used to be required to hand out pamphlets by the greys um, that gave instructional how-tos on basically growing your crops during the winter, um, how to fend for yourself should there be an invasion or if you were attacked on the road, you know, these informational things that were supposed to help with helping people help themselves. You've not seen any of that in the city anymore. It's all gone. And the only thing that you've seen close to it is this guy. And as you start getting closer, you hear him screaming, behold, behold, the markings of the plague now vanished. Behold, the flesh once corrupted now as pure as a newborn's gaze. The church, the magnificent church of Lysandre, hairbringer of salvation, they hold the key to redemption. In my darkest hour besieged by the black swords, it was sanctified by the hand of Lysandre through his, through his earthly vessels that lifted the veil of affliction from my eyes. Praise be to Lysande, whose malevolence throws through the hollowed house of this church. Come forth and be saved. Embrace the liberation of body and soul. Do you see these streets? Do you see the suffering, the agony? It need not be so. Take your hand, brothers and sisters, and he shall lead you to the bastion of hope, the fount of life everlasting. Cast off your pride and fall at the altar of the true savior. It is not too late, for the arms of the church are wide and their mercy boundless. And he's just going on and on about the church and this. I'm going to quietly room. say to the group, we've heard that name before and not in a good way. What name? I, I'm trying to make out Lys what you're saying. Lysande. Lysande. Remember our little cobalt friends? Yes. Right. Isn't that sure who they were worshipping? The, the, the dragon? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Kai, you would know that the dragon's name is Kali. Yeah, but they uh, one of the notes that we had intercepted was from. Still the have the note. Room. I'm gonna say that you do. You guys pull it out to look at it for a refresher. Vico does. Do I? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you take it out. You look at it. The name there is Lysander. And he was saying. Lasande. Yeah, close enough. And while we're getting a refresher on this note, what exactly does it say? I posted it a while ago. That's up to you guys yeah. to keep track of. I'm not gonna. Mm -hmm. I was just shooting my shot. <laughs> you need better aim. Wow. Um, roasted. I guess we're. Digging. Jacob's a good DM, but he's a dick. <laughs> 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 I'll take it. <laughs> Is it in useful links? No. Then I, I think the name. Don't play into his slender. He is a charlatan. Yeah. The name draws concern. Cassian's visibly pissed. He doesn't like the fact that this fucking clown is on his streets. 
I was gracious and pinned a message. Aw, Josh is being too nice to you. We shouldn't do that anymore, Josh. Mm. It's up to them to keep track of the stuff. Good cop, bad cop. That's what I like. I'll well, I'll I'll pin it for this time, but someone quick get a screenshot. I got it. So guys, uh, let's. I own the price to the gem dealer. Let's let's conduct our business and then go from there. All right. Um, you guys make your way over to the market, and it doesn't take you guys super long to see uh, one of the one of the booths set up. Actually, you know what? It's winter time in Norhaven. No one's out doing marketplace things. It's all indoors now. So you see a a door after walking around for a while that has jewelry in the window as like a display of what there is inside i'm assuming that you guys would be smart enough to know that that is the place that you were going for and that you would enter mm -hmm. um the head in uh clearly clearly seeing it's a jewel shop yep uh josh could you post a picture of anya um you see a very pretty um what human woman probably in her early 40s and she's got emerald earrings and an emerald um, necklace with lots of silver filigree. She's wearing completely green. She's got striking green eyes. Yep, that one, uh, Josh. And she just looks up at you and says, hello, can I help you? Uh, yes, I have some gems I'd like to sell. Uh, wonderful. Uh, please come over here. And then she moves to a different location where there's clearly some different devices to test the quality of a gemstone. While they walk that way, I'll just, like, whisper to Cassie and I'll be like, isn't she a little bit young to be friends with your mother? I don't know the nature of that relationship. I just know that they oftentimes shared water. It's a glass of wine. You know, book club with the ladies can age anywhere from like a girl in her 20s to a woman in her 90s. Like, let's be clear here. <laughs> the character is not really experienced in the world of book clubs, but he'll uh, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> He's a part not of the pegging club. Okay. <laughs> you guys are against the lady and you guys got beef. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's because so, we know damn well that we'd be nothing without our back line back there shooting firebolts. So mm -hmm. we love you, Kazer. We love you, bud. True. You're a fan of the back line, so you take a shot on the back side. I see mm -hmm. how it is. Someone called like that a back shot. Just like you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so right. I'm going to head over and kind of draw the gems <laughs> from my, my bag. The saluting got me. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You you walk over there, you pull out the gems, and I'm assuming you hand them to her so that she can I'll, examine them. Yeah, I'll place them on like the table or whatever is in front of us. All right, yeah. She takes a good couple of minutes looking at them, testing the quality. One of them is an emerald, which you do see her wearing, so you know that she likes those. How many gemstones do you give her? I, I had three, so I give her three. Okay, so it's going to be an emerald, an opal, and a ruby. And she looks at them testing their quality and then hands them back to you and says, Yes, I would be interested in perhaps purchasing these from you. Excellent. I'm a, a, a fan of doing business. What do you value these at? What is their actual value? 25 each, right, you said? I that's think it's it, yeah, that's the, yeah, you, you share 25 each. Yeah, so that's... She would say... I can offer you a hundred gold pieces. Excellent. Um, we'll we'll conduct this sale first, and then I am interested in a separate purchase. Very well. So um. Yeah. Oh wait, I I fucked up. I added two more than I should have. She actually is. The point here is that she's trying to lowball you. So she says, I can "Oh no, no." I can yeah, offer you 50 gold pieces. I was like, God damn, she wants these things. Re <laughs> rewind. <laughs> yeah, Tony yeah, was like, yeah, fine. I don't, no need to haggle here. Um, <laughs> Overpay. Um, okay, so, re so uh, only 50? One of these uh, is an emerald, and 
if I were a blind man, I could still tell that you enjoy emeralds. Go ahead and roll persuasion. Fifteen. I can offer you 70 gold pieces for all three. I'll take 70. Sounds reasonable. Very good. With one condition, because I am interested in making a purchase, then let's put this sale on pause at 70. If I could then take a look at some of your earring collections. Absolutely. Uh, just take a look around. If you want any uh, guidance, I'd be more than happy to help. Do you want to browse, or would you like suggestions? Um, I'll use your expertise. Looking for something silver. Okay. Just silver? Do you want gemstones in it? Um, let's compare some of them. So one pure silver, one with silver and a blue gem. Doesn't have to be sapphire, but it can be. Okay. Um, she goes through, she presents you a bunch of different options just to save on. I'm not going to go through and make Cassian suffer through an hour of picking an earring, though. but... Um, <laughs> Someone should have taken a picture of that. That would have been a funny emoji. Um, yeah, so she presents you with a wide variety of options. You're going to take some time picking them out, I assume. Mm -hmm. You get one that is clearly something that you would like. Would yes. you like to describe it? So, yeah, it's silver. It has kind of like a, 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 a separation in the middle, so it looks like almost two different earrings on one uh, connection point per ear, and there's a small gem in the middle. Small. All right. Yep. Uh, she says, okay, that will cost you 50 gold piece for this set of earrings. So, um, would you be willing to do 40 on the earring set? No. I make these by hands. Plus, that would put the value of your gemstones at worth more than they actually are. And I still need to sell things to make a profit. I like you for some reason, so I'm not interested in wasting anyone's time here. Um, I'm happy to do the trade. I'll take 70 for the gems I gave you, and 30, for, or I'm sorry, 40, or Jesus, 50 for the earrings. So I will give you 20 gold and the gems. Thank you very much. Wait. Wait, wait, no, no, that's no. not how that works. <laughs> yeah, you guys got that wait, too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wait, you give me twenty gold. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even over a reverse card. Um, <laughs> she she smiles when you catch your mistake, and she's not gonna fight you for it. She knows that you made an honest mistake, so she hands you the twenty gold pieces. I appreciate that. Uh, as I was kind of walking through town, I noticed that's uh, kind of kind of gloomy uh, as far as the atmosphere goes where where's the the liveliness what happened well there hasn't been a ton of reason for cheer oh also josh you never posted the picture of that one guy they talked to with the black sores um i don't super love it but i have this for right now i forgot to post it because i don't like it super much but yeah i'll post it no aren't you here you'll see I just can't get it to look how I want to, but we have this for right now. Okay. Um, she says, things kind of took a tone shift after Cassian was let go. And she says that with, like, a little bit of bite to her. Who? I assume this Cassian fellow is not liked? He has... It is very complicated. The children would love him and looked up to him a lot. So most of the very young people in the city are still very much so on the gray side. But I have my own... You, you probably don't know this, being new to the city, but I have my own connections to the matriarch of the, the Grey family, and I got to know their son fairly well. Mm -hmm. He always seemed kind, good at heart, but um, I, I don't see how, how he could have done such a vile thing. 
but I've heard of the Greys um, in in story. I, I'm sure some of the stories I've heard were embellished in one way or another, but overall, the themes are uh, benevolence. Um, what did he do? That um, what did we decide on your mother's name name being Zen? Remind Katarina. Me. Katarina. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, the way that Katarina had described it to me was, uh, they found. They remember waking up and they saw Cassian with a blade in hand. Looming over his wife's dead body. Oh wow. And the but, matriarch is, I take it, the mother, Cassian's mother, or is she just matriarch of the household that he was brought into? I'm sorry, could you say the first part of that again? It, uh, the, uh, Katarina is Cassian's mother, or is she just the matriarch of the household he he was then brought into? Uh, both. She, she, she is his biological mother, but also... Um, I remember Cassian as a boy going through the uh, the trials to become an official Grey because no one gets a pass in this city. And she kind of bulks up a little bit with pride. Um, living here is not as easy as it might seem, and even Cassian had to prove himself as being among us. So, Wow, uh, a mother expelling her own son? That seems she, like a lot. She was very confused. And is more confused now than ever, I think. But was it more like a forced hand situation, or? Well, there was lots of public outcry to have Cassian killed for what he did, because, you know. Do you think Aurora she did it was... to protect him? I think that might have been part of it, but I don't know. I I am not Katrina. I don't I don't tend to bring this up a lot with her because it is a very sensitive subject. But every time I do, she becomes more and more confused. You'd think as a mother, this is something she has a lot of regret about. I I I know that her heart is broken completely because all she wants to do is love for this city, and the people demanded that she and her husband step down. If you've noticed. There's no more greys, and I don't just mean the biological ones. Greys are not permitted within the city anymore. So you said things started going wrong when Cassian left. What if we could somehow find this Cassian fellow, bring him back? Do you think that could help things? How would that change the situation? I don't know. I am not Katrina, but I know that it would be a very polarizing situation. I feel like there would be lots of people who want to hear him out, and lots of people who would want nothing more than to Ooh. relieve him of his head. Who doesn't want the Greys to be in power? Lots of people in New Norhaven mm -hmm. really do not like the idea of the Greys. The people in Old Norhaven, especially those in Nomad's Rest, appreciate the value of the Grey history. But You'd think that after the sour turn, things seem to have taken here, that people might be more open to changing their mind on the Greys. I think people are stubborn, especially around here, and once they get something in their head, they find it hard to let go. For one, look at me. I'm stubborn and hard-headed, and even despite hearing from the horse's mouth, as it were, that Cassian did this thing, I still have my own doubts about it. Because I too am stubborn, and perhaps I'm a fool for thinking it, but... Interesting. Did, uh, by coincidence, we, we've seen a lot of, uh, Sick people, uh, this this black ooze of some kind. Um, did that always live here, or did that happen after Cassian left? No, no, that was more recent, as in like a couple of months after Cassian was banished. Um, the the people revolted against the Greys, and they they would be outright civil war if they had killed or banished the matriarch of the Grey family and the patriarch of the Grey family. So they were permitted to stay under the condition that they abandon the old ways of monster hunting, conducting these trials. Um, every other member of the Grey family was 
banished. They were sent out to live their more nomadic lifestyle, but I don't worry about them. They can definitely handle themselves. They are very capable people. Everyone who passes these trials can handle themselves in this wilderness. So. Sounds like quite a culture shock for the city. What kind of took over in the Grey Stead? The, it, the um... Hang on, it's on the map. I need to reference it real quick. Flip on. I've seen this Church of the Lysande around. I wonder... Yes, the Church of the Church of Lysande has... She kind of rolls her eyes and then says, stepped in to help. Mm. Um, they pray for the food, whatever fucking good that does. Um, th there was lots of chaos, and he promised to help with the situation in the city with these sores by praying over the food and whatever nonsense he fucking comes up with i am of the old religion the the northern light for me and you got cassie and you would know this the other guys might not but the northern light is the church um in norhaven it's the church in the center of town i still pray to the old gods and cling to the older ways this new fangled religion rubs me the wrong way it's like he's gotcha. changing our culture Cassian steps forward with his mask on, still cloaked, head down. Does this new church take money from the people? They do. They charge, uh, they ask for donations and they charge a fee of some kind for, for um, a prayer and some sort of what they claim to be holy water. I think it's bullshit, but people do end up getting better once they pay for the service. Um, Warden's Hall, and you guys, Cassian, you would know Warden's Hall is basically like the legal center. Like if you had to go to court, you would go to Warden's Hall. Um, Warden's Hall stepped in after the Greys stepped down to kind of take control of the city. And um, they've permitted Seraphel to continue these teachings and practices. I mean, it doesn't seem like he's doing damage per se, but I don't think he's helping very much by charging people who are struggling. Is Seraphel the leader of the Church of... How do you pronounce it? Lysander? Lysande? Sande. Lysande. Uh, Lysande. Um, he's one of the prophets, so to speak. He seems... I would say fanatic, but he seems too methodical to be considered fanatic. Interesting. It doesn't sound like the Greys ever would have charged anyone for helping. Yes, well, he justifies it by saying that the materials that he needs in order for to, to have this holy water to be blessed are expensive, so he charges what it takes to make the, the thing itself. Hmm. I happen to uh, belong to a church that doesn't need money for many religious supplies i'd be interested to talk to him to see what their methods are any idea where i could find him yes uh, the northern light is usually where he conducts these healing rituals or whatever the fuck they are very good well uh i appreciate your business and the information um you take care yeah, any time. If you plan to stay here for long, uh, you might want to buckle up. The winter gets pretty rough around here. Any uh, places you recommend to stay warm? <laughs> she grins to herself and says, you know, there was one that I would have recommended, but they had to stop uh, servicing due to the sickness. We've heard, and uh, unfortunate. Deeply disappointed. I was disappointed as well, trust me. Oh. A patron. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, yes. Time for well, a good old-fashioned gangbang. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not saying this in character, but looks like there's some competition for your mother's end. Cassian oh walks out the fucking place, slams the door shut. That's funny. Cool. 
I'll uh, I'll kind of like knock the table and then uh, turn around and leave. All right. Um, she just says, "Have a nice day." So you guys leave. Yeah. So where are you going now? All right, boys. Uh, that was useful. Sounds right. like um, your situation. Well, sounds like Cassian's situation with his mother may be a little more repairable than one might think. I think before we leave, or right up to the point where we are going to execute our plan, um, we we try and get her alone, give her a chance to speak with Cassian, and go from there. I think that makes sense. We're going to need the Greys on our side if we're going to do this. It sounds like they can barely take control of the city, so... Yeah, and I, listen, it's, as the... The protectors, the kind of the the higher chair of the city, if all of your uh, constituents are against you and want you to take action or overthrow you, I think... Sounds like her hands were tied. Th yeah. She didn't have much of an, uh, uh, an option. So there, there may be room there still, um, even if it's in secret. So I think first we go to... What's the other? Northern Light, thank you. And see what's going on with the sickness there. In case our time here is cut short, it'd be good to get some intel on that. And then we make our way over to the manor. Yeah. Yep. So plan is Northern Light, see what they do as a quote-unquote treatment. And then perhaps the apothecary, try and find a body, get a sample from there, and use the treatment on the sample to see if there's any type of reaction. I mean, I think this this guy seems to have all the information we need if he knows how to cure it. It's like I'm sure he knows something about how it spreads and where it came from as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like you, you make a sickness and then you make the cure for it and you charge people. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think that company is called Pfizer. <laughs> Mods. Ban this man. <laughs> cool. So let's head out to the Northern Light. Uh, I'm going to steal Jacob for just a quick minute before we go to the Northern Light. Yes, chef. Damn it, dude. I don't think we're gonna die, especially if the gates are open and there's a older. There's also wife. no grays in there. It's just yeah. his mom and his dad. Yeah. I think that we could play it off like we are friends of Cassian's and, um. I haven't seen him in a long time. Heard that we he lived here. Well, I was going to use the fact that I was that we're friends with Cassian to, like, uh, be like, uh, yeah, that like I've seen him. Like, have you seen him in a while? You know, like I like I I saw him a couple months ago. When's the last time you saw him? And then kind of get her talking about him and see where she's at. Or we could always say we know Anya and she's definitely down for a threesome. There's a, there's well, a maybe, not, there. maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> it is an option. There's Yo, the bar... first time Scott talks in like an hour, bro. Dude, Dude, I'm literally sitting mom. on my like... basement steps charging my phone. This blows. Scott, that do you remember? I, were you there when we did the extra, like mission? No. Because that's what happened to me. I was like crammed in between the wall and my bed, charging my phone with no internet. Yeah, and, dude, uh, I'm literally I just on myself. the bottom of my basement steps, and my phone's plugged into the wall. And I'm just listening to everybody laughing. 
Tony, you're fucking horny, dude. Go fucking rub one out, man. Yeah, seriously. That's all the celibacy no. for you. It's no, not yeah, November. Real, okay? if, the, if the date goes well tomorrow, he will do what needs to be done. Oh, my God. <laughs> She's a good Christian woman. We're waiting until marriage. <laughs> all right, so. Take her guys... to church, bro. <laughs> You guys, and they call it missionary for a reason, brother. I am no, going I to fucking kill your character if you don't. Uh... Um, <laughs> so y'all guys... check the status of the voice chat, by the way. Yes, I saw. <laughs> I mean, for some reason, I'm gay now. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm hitting Rudy yeah. over my dead wife, and I'm gay. I guess. That's there. No, that was there <laughs> since last session. When you, that was there from last session. That's been there for a while. Yeah, from when you kept posting memes of men. Yeah, oh, yeah that's true. You do do that. And you literally got again. your no, please. You don't. got your please turn don't. skips because you were do, that might have some implications on your relationship with your parents. <laughs> we banished you mom. because you were gay, not because you yeah. killed your wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well that's okay. Understandable. Have a nice day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you guys start making your way to the Northern Lights. As you approach the Northern Light Grand Entrance, you see that they're open, but what catches your catches your eye is two small, ragged figures slumped against one of the trees in the front courtyard. You see those figures belong to a woman and a small child, probably no older than the age of 10. Both of them have black sores all over their body. The woman doesn't seem to notice you as you approach. Her voice is barely even a whisper as she strokes her daughter's hair. Don't worry, darling. Everything will be okay. It's almost over, baby. You're going to be all right. Tears brim in her eyes as she looks down at her daughter. You notice a single empty vial lying next to them in the grass. She lifts her head and sees the six of you approaching. Please, I have given everything. My last coin. My last prayer. I have nothing else to give you. What more can I do for her? Bend over. I. <laughs> Jesus, he's on a war path. <laughs> yeah, he just told a ten-year-old girl to bend over. I yeah, I distance God. myself physically like, from Sid before the wrath of God. I'm having second thoughts about this. This group composition. About to, about to spam. I'm about to spam that photo of Crash. You're just doing like, this. Already, we don't trust you that much because you're a fucking symbiote, and now you're gonna diddle kids, bro. You're on the <laughs> Jesus <block>. Christ. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, no, that that was not it. <laughs> no first. Yeah, she was talking to her yeah. kid. Okay. Um, they they have those visible black sores similar to the uh, the guy in the alley. They do. Okay. I'm gonna um, kick the vial gently with my foot and uh, ask her. Uh, did you visit the church? I did. What they give you? Supposedly they gave me the cure, but I only had enough for. And she, her eyes start filling up with tears, and she says, I only had enough for her. What is the cure? Did they, did they ever say? They prayed, they splashed some water on me, and then, or splashed some water on my daughter, and then they told her to drink uh, some holy, holy water of some kind. And it was in that vial. That's quite the sacrifice. Yeah. How long ago did you guys uh, take the the cure? Just a few minutes ago. How much was it? It was a hundred gold pieces. A hundred. Now oh. my daughter is going to be orphaned, but there's the Greys won't be able to look after her anymore. If you don't mind my asking. How long have you been sick? Been sick for a few weeks. And when did you notice it? What were your, did you did you come in contact with somebody who was sick prior? No, we've kept our distance for the most part. And when your daughter got the cure, was it instantaneous? 
Like, could you tell it cured her? You look at the daughter, and she's... She she did just tell you that they took that that cure minutes ago. Um, There is not an immediate, like, oh, she has no sores left. But you see the sores are comparably smaller uh, than the ones on her mother. And as you look, you can almost... Like, you see... um, a scab healing over in fast motion. You ever seen those kind of videos before? That's kind of like what it is. Um, Just it's slow, but it's, it's working. Guys, what about that vial we got from that, uh, from that corrupted forest? Do you want to give it a shot? We we didn't Mm -hmm. use it. So I I can make more. Mm Mm-hmm. If it helps. Before she does, or before we we do, um, I want to try and get a sample. And I'm saying this to the group. offer offer it to her in exchange. Yeah. Uh, 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 miss, we we have a vial of holy water. We'd be willing to trade if you would be willing to help us with a sample of the infection. Uh, yes. Yes, I would. I would gladly take you up on that. Yes, there's no guarantee, but this is, this comes straight from a holy source, and has not been opened since. Um, what we she would need eyes you up and down when you say there's no guarantee, and then she's starting to realize that maybe she's just desperate. Go ahead and roll persuasion on this to make it sound like you guys are telling the truth. It is. It is actually true, but it sounds hella sus. Yeah. I'm sure she's pretty desperate if she's going to die anyways. Yeah. Uh, I, I can roll, I asked. 16. 16. She looks suspicious, but the desperation is definitely taking over. Um, I, I'll let you uh, draw the sample, and I kind of hand her a dagger and say all I need... There's and an empty I'll, one on the floor. I'll, I'll hold a clean vial so that there's no contamination or potential contamination. Um, and I'll just instruct her, I would need you to puncture a sore and drain whatever comes out into this vial, and I'll hold the vial under her arm. So maybe you guys are not envisioning this the way the sores are. It's not like a pus-filled boil. It is much more like a flesh-eating disease. I see. So, so instead, it would be more like cutting off some yeah. dead black skin. So um, instead uh, of saying that, I'll say, um, I will need you to cut off some of the infected area and place it into this vial. Uh, she takes the knife and starts cutting away, and you realize that there's no look of pain on her face as she does this when she's in the black part of this sore. You don't feel and, that? No, it... I don't know. It's like where the sores are, it is painful all around, but the actual sore is nothing. It's very painful all over. It just hurts, but it's like there's nothing left wherever the black rot touches. Do you have pain internally? Yes. My stomach is on fire. Very well. And I'll uh, kind of give, you know, pass the vial to her. She puts some, some of the dead skin in there for you. I'll cap it and then hand it to Kai. What do you mean? Of the holy water? What? No, well, I think we were going to give her that. I mean, if it cures her, I mean. Yeah, so we'll give her the holy water. Okay. Uh, As soon as you give it to her, she downs it immediately. I want to hang out for a minute and watch what happens. Yeah. Okay, using your... um, Using your... How am I saying this? I don't know why I'm saying it this way. You look at the daughter and the mother, 
And you can see, as you're looking very closely, you can see um, someone make an investigation check for me. Because this is actually kind of hard to notice because of how slow this works. We're all retarded, right? Plus one, right? <laughs> Who hasn't rolled yet today that has at least a plus one? This would be an, an investigation check because you don't... For one, you don't even know what to do the medical analysis on because you don't know what this is. And second of all, you, you're you trying to see if it's doing anything in the first place. Like, I have plus two. Go for it. Might yeah, as well. That's that's... Higher. Well. Can you all hear my typing, by 12. the way? No. Okay, good. I can't. A 12? Um, yeah. That is the DC. So you can see that the daughter has extremely slow healing, but it's healing and there's no effect on the mother. Okay. okay. Well. I'm gonna looks talk. like their holy water is better. They definitely have something yeah. that we don't. I am, uh, yeah, I'm going to drop a hundred gold in her hands and say from one broken family to another. She starts just falling apart, crying. I was going to give her three, so that just makes me feel like shit. <laughs> I wasn't going to give her any. Um, yeah. I'll guess she starts home. absolutely bawling, and she you can tell she wants to try to hug you, but she's afraid that she's going to infect you. Um, and between sobs, she just says, thank you, thank you. My daughter will have a mother because of you. Um, and you see her uh, slowly gather herself and the hundred gold piece, take her daughter's hand, and walk back into the church. I'll gesture and kind of like follow behind them at a, a, a slight distance. Let we them go, go first. With, we can go with them. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of curious. I want to observe. Yeah. I don't want to seem like we're part of, like she's part of a, a eight person group. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we're, we're sponsoring her for the medicine. It's not that weird. Yeah, you guys follow at somewhat of a distance, which looks a little bit strange of a group of six people following five to ten feet behind and then just, like, not doing anything but watching them. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, so you see uh, I a, couple of people, a couple of people in... Um, just completely white robes, and you have this uh, one person who's wearing white and, or two people who are wearing white and red robes. And um, she walks up to one of the people wearing white and red robes and says, I have the money, please, please, can you perform it on me too? And uh, you, how close are you guys? I, I'm, I walked up with them. Okay, yeah. so you're not going to make your role perception checks for this. Yeah. You hear uh, this guy looks maybe like a deacon or something. Um, he says, of course, my child, or actually he doesn't have, he doesn't have the Norhaven accent. He says, of course, my child, I, I would be more than happy to help you. Sa uh, what's his name? My Sandy be praised. And then he uh, turns to a little, pool of what looks like water behind him and he starts murmuring in um what languages do you guys speak abyssal not one that he would be speaking infernal abyssal infernal under common and common goblin <laughs> i bet you do and Joe, what does Kazer? 
Uh, mine's a little bit messed up. It won't load because we left the one empty, if you remember that. Got you. I, the one. I know at least two languages that you know. Okay. Um, they would be Elvish and Common, just because you're an elf. And Numa? He can't, he can't read. <laughs> he can speak. <laughs> yeah, I think... He, yeah, he should know Elvish and Common as well. So what I'm going to say is that you guys... The two elves kind of perk up a little bit when you hear what he's saying because he's chanting magically. He's not an elf, but this enchantment is spoken in the elvish tongue. And he's saying, Lysandy be praised. Let this be an offering to you. Uh, the soul cleansed as you would want it so. And he sprinkles her with water and then he offers her a small vial of what also looks like water and says, drink this, my child, and you will feel better in a few moments. And she downs it and then hands over the gold to him. He turns away and puts it into an offering box, then looks at the rest of you and says, you do not look like you have the sickness. Is there something I can do to help you? I'm curious, what kind of holy water are you using? The holy water that we use is blessed in a very particular manner by our disciples of Lysande. Uh, Seraphel himself performs the, the um, blessing, but we are not allowed to be present. He says that it is beyond our scope and it is not Lysendi's will. Is it a one-time cure or do people have to keep paying? It is a one-time cure. Once people can pay for this, they are they are relieved of this burden. Hundred gold uh, seems a little steep. It also seems oddly specific. Very it, round. The price is set in a manner to justify how much it costs to actually gather the necessary material for the blessing ritual. So it sounds like the material is fairly finite if it's so expensive. As I said before, I no one but Seraphel is permitted to know exactly. It is how a this shame because we could definitely help you acquire some of the ingredients if they're hard to get. True. I I appreciate your your willingness to help, but again, I don't know how to even instruct you how to help the Sounds church. Sounds like uh, Salamander? What's his name? Seraphil. Well, how can we get an appointment with uh, with Mr. Salamander? Seraphil is is busy praying at the moment. I'm afraid that you'll have to come back some other time. He's not available right now. When is he usually praying? He prays very often. He does not like to be disturbed while he's praying. I can imagine a man of such high faith being occupied in his prayers. I assume he has to eat and sleep at some point, yes? To be quite honest, I've never seen him do either. Do you know where he prays? I do. Do you know if he has anybody accompanying him? He never does. He needs to be left alone. He is the high priest of Lysande's church, so it's understandable. Of course. Um, in my church, if there is an emergency, if there is somebody appointed to contact uh, the high priest. Is there somebody uh, like that around here? I'm afraid I don't catch your meaning. Some Someone to... Uh, alert him to an emergency or uh, some uh, important situation. Well, that would be my myself, and um, he gestures to the other deacon. It's like, we, we are the, the second in command, so to speak. Oh, wonderful. Um, we, we, we've traveled quite a long ways and uh, are seeking to assist with the illness. It seems like you all have uh, a way of dealing with it, and we want to support you. Um, could you get a message to him that we'd like to assist in any way possible with gathering the materials and perhaps set a time for maybe the morning to have a conversation. 
I I will inform him when he has done his prayers. Sometimes he can pray for more than thirty some hours at a time. He's very dedicated. I admire it greatly. Um, hmm. If you admire there... it, would you be willing to mirror his dedication and wait for him to be done and let him know, so that we can all help the sick people of this city and beyond? I admire his dedication, but I need to be helping people here. In order to do that, I need to make sure I get my rest. Um, I will let him know when I see him next and he is done praying that you all wish to speak, but how do I find you? Um, there's a popular bar? Pause? Pause the game? Uh... <laughs> Click start. Didn't didn't you say? Oh no, no, Nomad's Rest is a place or is it a bar? Nomad's Rest is a whole district. Oh, it's a whole district. Okay, I thought it was a bar. Um, what was the bar we were gonna meet the uh, the guy at? We'll call it the Wolf's Head Bar. Okay. Um, we're we're gonna stay at the Wolf's Head Bar. And if we're not okay. there, you could leave a message, and we can uh, come seek you here. As I'm assuming you'll be here very often. I will be here most every single day. Um, yeah, also, I'm going to call it the Wolf's Head Tavern, not the Wolf's Head Bar, yeah, just so you guys have a tavern. Yeah, yeah. DM. Yeah. Um, if I want to do something without the group noticing, could we do like a versus check of some kind? Like, we can roll a group perception, and then you can roll a stealth check or something? I'm going to say no, it's going to be on passive perception, because if he's trying to do it without your notice, your character wouldn't even know what they're okay. looking for. Right. So, sure, we could do that. You'd have to roll a stealth sleight of hand. What is it you're trying to do? I am trying mm. to stealthily unhook my whip from my belt. Interesting. Okay, go ahead, and we'll call that sleight of hand. Slide your hand, pimp. That's off the table. I'm going to get another D20. Okay. All right. What was your roll? A 16. 16. What is everybody's passive perceptions? Does anyone have higher than the 16? I have 16 exactly. Per perception? I do not. Mm. Passive... 12. Yeah. So if there is a tie, it goes to the person who's performing the action. So no one you barely um tie. Wait, what do you have? Oh, yeah. Dragon. So you would be the only one who notices that. Cassian unhooks his whip from his belt and lets it unfurl onto the floor down his leg. It is extremely subtle, but you do notice it. I would say, Cassian, you can clock the fact that Kai noticed this. You see him looking at the whip, look at you, and then just look back at the deacon. Kai, right, we lock eyes for a second, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to interject if you want. <laughs> Fuck it, we ball. We're here to bang. Fuck it, we ball. <laughs> I'd like to do a double crack over my head and try and intimidate the cleric into... Uh, what's this guy's name? Um, Salamander. Deacon Dennis. Deacon Dennis, and his god is... Lasande. Lasande. Um, and the fellow who does all the praying? Seraphel. Down a flight of stairs. In my Norhaven accent, I will say very loudly, we need to see Seraphel now. And I crack the whip twice. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll for intimidation. Is this using your maneuver? Um, so this is where, <laughs> this is why I brought it up at the very beginning is because the maneuvers weren't quite sorted out yet. Uh, I guess it's menacing. It would be menacing, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll use menacing. So what does that give you again? Remind me. Menacing is when you hit a creature with a weapon attack. I don't necessarily want to hit him. Um, 
You add a superiority die to the attack's damage roll, and the target must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, it's frightened. I think there was one that we used for intimidation, but I don't remember what it was. Yeah, it was one that I made custom for you. I think they you have to roll an intimidation check, but you're counted you you're given like proficiency with it. You can use your dexterity modifier as opposed to your charisma modifier. Okay, my dex mod. My dex mod is plus four. My intimidation is plus six. Okay, so that's a plus ten to the roll. Do I add the um you guys can see my hands? I'm gonna put the camera on the dice. Okay. Please be in that fucking twenty. It's close. It's a nineteen. I can't get my camera close enough, but I swear to fucking god, it's a nineteen. Fuck yeah. I see. Right. Nineteen nineteen plus ten is twenty nine. Plus my superiority die. Yep. So that's, that's a twenty nine plus. So you a plus thirty. Six. I got a natural six on it too. Okay, so thirty five. A near impossible check is thirty, and you rolled a thirty five. Um, was that thirty five? Thirty five. Well, I think he. he yeah, twenty nine and six. Nineteen plus doesn't, six doesn't really 30. matter. It's above a thirty. So, um, shit. This is not how I was expecting this to go. Um, Let's fucking go. Cassian, Cassian's really mad right now because oh, I think so. I yeah, think he, so. he, he, so, he he just just for context, he would have taken that little kid and made them a gray, and he can't do yeah. that now. Yeah, he can't do that right now. Um, yeah, you crack the whip. The entire this is you guys as his friends can feel heat almost radiating off of him with this anger and like. You're a little bit glad that he's on your side <laughs> because this is really bit. intimidating in this moment. Everyone in the church that is not a direct member clears out immediately. Um, all the people in white are standing completely stone still. They are too scared to move, and so is the other deacon. Um, Dennis is looking in front of you, wide-eyed, horrified in terror. What did you say, Cassian? The the gentleman's name, um, Dennis. Uh, the the guy who does all the prayer, pray. Sarah, 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 Sarah. Sarah Phil, right, Sarah. Sarah. Phil. Yeah, Sarah Phil. Sarah Phil needs to speak with us now. I'm gonna Jacob, this... make sure you check your yeah, DM I, real quick. I, yeah, I'm, I'm aware. Um. Can I take this moment where everyone is shitting their britches and staring at uh, Cassian to pilfer yeah, my hundred gold out of the collection box? <laughs> Just a hundred. Um, Look, I'm not trying to break the game. It's the it's the sticky gloves from home from home alone. Yeah. You just dip, just dip it in the box. <laughs> um, we'll come back to that in just a second. Give me a second okay. here, guys. Yep, this is not something that I expected. So, as he cracks the whip, Sin kind of. Not staggers, but like takes a step back and half draws the sort of vengeance, and you see that symbiotic ooze kind of envelop from the forearm down the Better pommel. Put this shit away. Give me just a second here. Oh, I'm. Bye, Josh. What a roll! Homie out here rolling thirty-five. You whore. I'm like, what if That's we wild. A boss fight right now? It was a, rolled, it's a custom 19. battle maneuver. Yeah. Yeah, he rolled a 19 plus his dex modifier plus a Yeah, nat this six. is not the way this story was planned, and they are scrambling right now. They're freaking out, boys! <laughs> <laughs> we broke the game. This is this is probably equivalent to if I would have decided to steal the uh the amulet. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to be like super broody on camera too, so you guys could see that I was pissed. Mm -hmm. But that shit is like, that's what the Greys were all about: was taking those like lo the lost, the last, the least, the lonely, the orphans, and like making them into warriors to protect the city. Yeah, that's that's so, very so flavorful. some fucking like stupid that. ass church like taking advantage of these kids. Like that's that's rage worthy. All right, hundred golds of steep. So, uh, you said you're gonna try to sticky fingers the hundred gold pieces. Oh yeah. 
go ahead and roll sleight of hand with disadvantage. All right. Because this is a room full of people who now all have their eyes on you guys. <laughs> well, not on me specifically. You are standing close enough where it's... I am small and unassuming and you. not cracking the whip. Which is why I'm allowing you to roll in the first place. Okay, 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 okay. So we have a 19 plus 7 for my first roll. Okay. That definitely and then we have an 18 plus 7 okay. for my second. Yeah. He gets the money. Uh, you get the money. Hell so, yeah. It's like everyone is dead silent looking at Cassian in fear. Meanwhile, Vicar is off in the corner, like just taking handfuls of money and shoving it in his pockets, and nobody seems to notice. <laughs> um, the, the feathers that you have actually dampen the sounds of the coins as they're they falling. Would. So, uh, DM, real, real quick, I, I would like to imagine that the whip coming out. If you know anything about Cassian, you would know that this is probably Cassian. Yeah, no, that is that is abundantly clear. However, everyone who was not a member of the church left, and these churchgoers are not native to Norhaven. So Fair you're enough. still in the clear for the time being. Sneaky man. All um, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I just put my I'm just putting my hundred back in. That's it. I don't want to like. So yeah, feel like eight hundred gold. That's fucked. <laughs> Robin yeah. Hood out here. Um, there actually there only would have been two hundred gold to steal anyways because the the only people in here that went were her daughter beforehand and that was all she could afford. So, so. you're saying I get two hundred gold? I'm saying with a roll like that, go ahead and take two hundred. Hey. <laughs> I got an eighteen plus seven for my final. Yeah, that's it was definitely good enough to steal two hundred gold pieces. Hell yeah! Fuck this church. <laughs> the scammers all right so this is something that all right yep 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 so dennis looks extremely scared um he's shaking very violently and he he just points to a door like he's too scared to speak or move but he's not standing in your way and he points to a door is there anything else you're doing? Cassian. Cassian looks to the group. I kind of, I look at Cassian. I give him a nod. I I sheath the we're with you sword, and as I walk past Dennis, I say, "You should have helped us and the people instead of having to resort to any type of violence and walk by." Is you said this man's wearing a robe, or or yeah, white, like red a, robe. a red and white robe. Mm. And it's brown on the back. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little bit. If, he, if this man had pants on, I was pulling him down. But No, yeah. he doesn't have pants on. <laughs> pants him and push him? <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my god. No, we're good. I'm good. Uh, yeah, Cassian reaches do. for the door handle. I'm going to put my hand on Cassian's chest and say, do you want to enter soft or hard? Let's. There's there's a joke there. I mean, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I don't. I don't. Jacob, check your message real quick. Also, I don't know how powerful this person is. I think we leverage our position to help the city based yep. on our skills. Agreed. Just wanted to make sure. And I'll I reach for like the handle. Step to the side. Yeah. Um. Nice catch. Yeah, so you guys... Also, John, I was using the bathroom, but I knew as soon as you asked if he was wearing a robe, I was literally like, he's going to pants him. And <laughs> I, li- I literally called it in my head. I was like, this fucker, dude. Well. <laughs> All right, so you guys, you have your hand on the door handle. Are you turning it and going in? Yes, sir. All right. You open up the door. You see that this room is... It has no windows. And it is only lit by several candles that are placed in a very specific order in the middle of the room on his knees you can see a man with like on his knees with his hands up in a very religious way um muttering to himself in (laughs) elvish and he's um as soon as you open the door he slowly stands up and turns around and says hello 
Pleasure making your acquaintance. Cassian, I don't think there's any need for that front. Cool. Well, maybe not. And I reach up and I take my mask off and reveal my face. Yep, he doesn't look surprised. These people need our help. That's what I'm doing. Salamander, at 100 gold apiece, it doesn't sound very benevolent. Calmly looks at you and just says, that is the price that is required to make the ingredients in the first place. If I didn't have to have that charge, if I didn't have that charge in place, we wouldn't be able to help anybody. Who's who's coming up with the charge? That's That's my biggest question here. What are these ingredients? <laughs> It is a secret ritual, and I'm afraid that I cannot share it with you. All right, Mr. Krabs. It's like, since when the church has not run on goodwill and good faith, and instead run on a business model? It's like, aren't you supposed to run on donations and help as many people as you can with what you have? You're not meant to charge people. That's what we're doing, but we're in a foreign land far away from our donation coffers. We cannot get support as easily out here. If you really wanted to help people, you could share with them the information. Imagine if there was a household, a household whose sole purpose was to help the people. That would be wild, wouldn't it? You do realize that there's a wide spectrum of gods. A goddess of the hunt does not necessarily have the same beliefs as a benevolent god of philanthropy. A god of luck has different beliefs. Yes. So only you can get them? In a way, yes. And you can't teach people how to go get them? No. Unfortunately, it is my burden. Because my god has instructed it to be so. Pretty Mm. rich burden. Surely there is a way for us to lower the cost. Tell us how we can help. I'm afraid that there is no way you can help, except for... Perhaps, Cassian, it would be best if you leave the city. I left once and now we are here. You are charging a hundred dollars per head. That's true. But your return will cause an uprising. With whom? The people. So far I have met four or five people who wish for my return. You've met all the right people. Those civilians that you scared the shit out of just earlier, I'm sure that they have a very different opinion of you. They don't know who I am. I think a whip crack will start some rumors, at the very least. I'm going to observe the room to see if there's any vials or anything apparent uh, related to the ritual. Ritual. Nope, nothing here. Just an empty room. Candles. Candles. What do those candles smell like? Sandalwood? Hmm? They smell a hell of a lot like very overwhelming, uh, olfactory nerve stimulating sense. Some sea breeze up in this bitch. I'm gonna lick my thing, my index and thumb, and start like stamping out some of the candles. As you do that, he says, "Please don't do that." I'm going to ignore him. He just watches you. This place stinks. You're you're taking advantage of my people. I'm helping your people, Cassian. You're the one who ran away. Someone had to step up. And now that you're back, I'm afraid it's been too late, and it's probably best if you go back home. And I don't mean here. I'm not buying that, and I'm also not buying that it costs you 100 gold apiece and that we can't help you get anything. What do you do with the gold? Melt it down? Sprinkle it in the water? Give it to poor families or people that need it like any church would, surely. The gold gold goes towards the materials necessary for the actual ritual so that I can buy this water. I thought the materials were divine and only you could get them. That's true. 
but that doesn't mean they don't have a cost associated. I'm sure some of you would have spells that you can cast that have material components, correct? What are Those the materials? Are materials that we can get, anybody can get. Not necessarily. If gold can get the materials, then I can get the materials. He smiles softly, um, but doesn't say anything. The Grey's coffers run deep. The Grey's coffers built... used to run deep. We built this city once. We can do it again. The backs of those that built this city are now carrying burdens elsewhere. And who's to blame for that burden? It's certainly not me. It's not me either. I came in after all of this was done. And who sent you? Lesende. My god. And he hails from? The heavens. Spoke to and you, you hail dream. from? I hail from nowhere. Someplace far away to the west. I am very, very far away from my home. And I would like very much to return, return to my warm climate with the people that are of my faith. But I am here in a frozen tundra trying to help people. You make it sound so altruistic. Would you have let that 10-year-old girl die? Just because her mother couldn't afford 100 gold? What 10-year-old girl? I've been in here praying for the last 17 hours. I haven't seen sunlight in a while. The 10-year-old girl you instructed your disciples to turn away because her mother wouldn't have the money. You seem to know a lot about what's going on outside when you choose to. Because I have people that tell me things. So when I am done praying and I need to get some fresh air, I, I am told things. At the very well, least, any good church would be concerned with the children impacted by some situation, whether it be a disease or famine or what have you. I'm going to whisper to Cassian on the side, what are we doing here? I wish I had an answer for you. Well, we made a big scene and now we're in. He's the only source of hope for these people. It's not like I can, can, can cure the disease now. <laughs> can you show us the ritual? I'm afraid no, I can't. Sounds like we can replicate it. Seems like you're holding all the cards and you don't want to share. My god has instructed me to be extremely thorough. Um, Kazer, make a base intelligence check for me. It's not good. It's a six. Kai, make a base intelligence check for me. Do it. My man got new dice. <laughs> 13 okay. stupid above average um yeah and i think that this might be something that you guys would think of in the moment so i'm going to give this to you as someone who is familiar with the process of creating alchemical things or altering base liquids to have magical properties of some kind might be a good idea to see if you can get a sample Of the water? Mm hmm Whatever they're doing. <clears throat> Prove your goodwill to me. Provide me with the antidote now. I will spread your goodwill and perhaps bring you more business. I would be happy to, but that will cost you a hundred gold pieces. What if the church took this one on the nose for positive PR? If I did it for you, and it got around, everyone would storm the church wanting free antidote. It will not get around. Show me your good faith, and leave with your life. We'll show you ours. You can see the black ooze, kind of like, almost like a, a hair standing on the back of a dog's neck when it's angry. You see it coming off the back of Sid's neck. That's fucking sick. 
he smiles at you and says, I am in no danger. I'm sure Dennis would be happy to give you uh, the ritualistic blessing and the holy water. Great. Uh, real quick for the party, did we witness Dennis do something before handing the vial, the the cure to the lady? He said a blessing. Did he sprinkle anything or did he just say a blessing? I can't remember. He sprinkled stuff, said a blessing in Elvish, and then handed a small vial. Okay. Have you spoken to Katarina or Dimitri? No. But I know that they are not very overly fond of my presence here in the Northern Light. They feel like I've taken over the old ways and forced a new religion down people's throats. Is C Cassian's not familiar with this person, right? No. Yeah. Yeah. Ask. <laughs> well. <laughs> The Sunday. Showed me visions. Said that one day the wolf would be back to claim its pride. Well, sounds like he was right. And what did this vision instruct you to do when the lion did return? I was instructed to convince you to leave, which I'm trying to do now. Um, is there an, like an or else in there? No. The consequences of those actions are out of my hands. I can only do what I'm told. Well, this has been enlightening. And not in the divine sense. Inspiration for that quick wit. I like that. <laughs> what, the comment that I made? Yeah, it was deliberate. Um, but thanks for the water. And I'm going to turn around and leave. Cassian heads towards the door as the last one out of the room. And mm -hmm. he turns to face... <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> we're bad. We're bad with now. names. It's canon now. <laughs> it is absolutely not canon. <laughs> <laughs> um, with his with his hand on the doorknob, um, getting ready to close the door behind him, Cassian turns and faces um, Sarafel. and Sarafel. Sarafel. As it stands now, you are the last hope for this city. I will not bother you further. But if I catch wind that the people are paying over one cent, over a hundred gold, I will be back for your head. And that is a promise. The wolf has returned, but he's brought the pack with him. He's not alone. And I'll close the door. As you go to close the door, make an insight check for me. Fourteen. Seraphel believes he's telling the truth. You close the door. I'm gonna walk up to the deacon and and uh, let him know that uh, Seraphil has instructed you to give us a vial of holy water. Go ahead and make and a deception it. check for me. Didn't he actually, though? No, he didn't. He said okay. it cost you 100 gold pieces, just like everyone well, else. My specialty. If you pay for it. So I have a 17 plus 9. All right. 9 oh, deception. Boy. Yeah, the, this is, guys, I'm good was, at some things. The DC Damn. on this was really low anyways, because he's kind of scared shitless of Cassian. So, um, yeah. He, closer, closer, John. 
he begins the ritual on you and then splashes some water on your shoulders and on your head and then gives you a small vial. Kazu, do you make note of what he said? No. No, he's, he's telling you to make note of what he said. I'll be honest, no, I didn't. I started that something that was really important. My no, 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 he's okay. telling you right Kazer, now. Kazer, in game, in game, did you make note of what the elvish words were? Yeah. Oh. Sorry, boys. <laughs> What, it's called someone sedate me. <laughs> Joe just looks at the camera and goes, No. No. Nope. <laughs> nope. no. I'm not going to lie to the homies. <laughs> Fuck. That That's actually funny. killed me. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh my <fucking> <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Do we get the vial? We got it. Cool. All right. So I'm going to flip the idea yeah. out here. It is 11 11. You Take guys away. just hit a point where we could stop if you guys wanted to stop. And if not, we could keep going. It's your choice. I'm stop down around. for 12. 12 till 30. I'm down for that. Send it. Everyone else feeling good about that? Yes, good. sir. All right. So we'll push onwards. You guys are exiting into church. What are you doing now? <clears throat> I'm going to give the holy water to Cassian. Or, well, uh, no. I mean, should I give it to Sid instead? I'm, who, who's, I'm, who, uh, who wants I'm this? Being... While we are being candid with each other, right. I am I am a little worried, based on what Sid told us previously, that this could have an ill effect on Sid at some point. The water. Yeah, or, or any sort of blessing from these charlatans. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Maybe, uh, maybe Kai should actually have this so he can tinker with it. Um, I quick point of note, Cassian, did you put your mask back on when you left the church? Yes, yes, I did. Okay, just want to make Thank sure. Thank you for that. You threw me a bone by asking, but yes, I did. Yeah, just wanted to ask before it came up because I don't want to, yeah. you know, you as your character, I think, would be smart. Yeah, to they'd be aware. Of yourself. Yeah. Can, yeah, I think the apothecary is a good shout. Maybe they can tell us what's in this thing. Um, this is a bit selfish, but. I really want to go see my mother. I think we have to get that done either way. We need to know if the greys are with us or we're on our own. My only worry there... Uh, once we blow our if, spot. Yeah, once we blow our spot, we don't know what the reaction or the reception is going to be. Whether or not we'll have a chance to see the apothecary here. Do That's you want to see your mom alone? Or do you want... I don't think to be there. alone. Uh, you, best, you, right? even, even if alone. he speaks to her alone, that's totally fine, but we should be nearby to help if yeah. Yeah, something fair. happens. I don't want to get I don't want to get too gushy. Because I'm a strong brooding man with black hair and I'm sad all the time, but I think we've made the commitment to each other. And my family has cast me out once. I would be amiss to go speak with someone without my people by me. And maybe I have private words, but I would be a fool to try and take on any endeavor in the future without my family. Aww. I think and, we'll and then I'm going to punch you in the shin, because that's where I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think that applies to punch, all of us here. Punch him in the kneecap. Just... Yeah, oh, thanks, thanks. I you you feel a very, very I'm light, high. feathery blow. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go to the apothecary, see and what then we can go get there, and then our next order of business will be the manor. Yeah. Yes. I would like to check if there's another beer in the fridge. Be right back. We're going to walk to the apothecary. Oh, how That's about it. we, what is it? It's 10, 11. Yeah, let's take a break. 11, 20, quick one. Fast, fast, Five? fast. Yeah, pee. Pee and drink, pee and drink.
Uh, Jacob, do you want to go down for a second? Uh, drag me. I'll be back in a second. I'm going to go take a piss, too. Are we breaking? Okay. I said you're headed to the apothecary guild yes sir all right so you guys make your way down there it's basic it, uh it's pretty far in terms of the the walk distance here but you make your way over there and um it's a storefront it's not huge it's nothing like the um the alchemist guild and penting which is huge this is small um you walk in there's a couple of different workshops but nothing crazy here uh you see a human guy with some stubble on his beard. He hasn't shaven in a few days. Um, got some bags under his eyes. Comes out when you guys enter the, the little workshop, and he says, "Hey, uh, what can I, uh, what can I do for you?" We offer basic remedies here. We have uh, soaps, um, things for common cold and whatnot. If you're here to ask about the sickness, I'm sorry to say I have nothing to report. And I keep telling people, but they keep coming back. Can you... I don't... I mean, I've tried everything that I can think of and nothing is is working it's i don't know what is going on with this have, sickness have you it tried... doesn't act like any plague i have encountered before have you tried replicating the holy water that the church of lasande is using i've tried all different kinds of experimentation with holy water and it doesn't seem to work holy water is non-effective against this thing can you if side question if i had some type of elixir can you tell me what's in it like how it's made, what ingredients are inside? I don't have the necessary tools for that. I know the Greys used to have stuff like that in their um their stronghold, but yeah. I can't speak for as to what survived after the um the purging happened. So, if we if we had those tools, but not the expertise, would you be able to use the tools to tell us? It might be beyond my skill set. I mean, I could always try, but. I'm just kind of, it's just me and two other people here, and we're all kind of working around the clock already. We're exhausting all of our options, and we are exhausted from doing so. I can tell you guys are busy. Um, in the event that we do find or purchase or somehow come across those tools, would you know of a place that could use them or someone who could use them with some proficiency? Well, I know we have the uh the apothecary here but we have very close ties with um the alchemist guild in other cities um i think the headquarters for the alchemist guild is in penting they would uh if we had the tools they would that guild would be able to take a look they would assume so if you had someone probably skilled enough in the art of alchemy with all the supplies they could probably figure it out on their own then if you have like a guild membership or something, you might be able to figure it out. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, no, um give me give me a second. He walks away and comes back like a minute or two later with um some notes that look like they've been hastily copied down um just kind of higher level view he hands them over to you 
you see as you rifle through them, it's largely just failed experimentations with holy water. Um, trying to alter it magically, trying to alter it chemically. He's using the holy water as a base for trying just um, trying to understand how basic holy water could be manipulated in a way to make the sickness stop. Uh, yeah, no, they're, they're copies. They're not down to the chemical level of what they did. I just wrote some of the general notes, but I'm sure you could probably figure it out. Yeah, no problem. Side note, do you happen to have any healing potions or anything um, of the sort? Yeah, no, I've got I've got a couple of healing potions. Um, above table, is there a... I'm trying to find it on d, &D Beyond. Is there a place I can find the like the expected price for those? Uh, there is you would go to where it says hang on let me pull it up for you uh blah, 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 blah. yeah so you would go to where it says game rules yep and then down to magic items and then search for health potions but uh healing potion is going to run you more in this city because of the limited resources mm -hmm. so they're going to cost you about 70 gold piece a piece okay Yikes. So maybe we do I was gonna, that, that was going to be my next question. Is is it cheaper to just wait for Kai to make them? It is them? a lot cheaper for Kai. Kai can use 25 gold piece and then make a wild healing potion over one long rest. Yep. Um, okay. And you can actually do it over a short rest as long as you're within a guild location and the apothecary counts as an alchemist guild location. So if you wanted to do some of that stuff here, you could. Um, Cassian, you also know that in the bowels of your keep, in the, the Grey Keep, there is a much more sophisticated um, alchemy station than what this guy has here. You're level two in the guilds, mm -hmm. so uh, you'll have to read up on what I gave you because I don't know everything off the top of my head. But generally, you gain the ability to make uh, potions a little bit better, and you get to make splash potions, which that is a thing that you could do because I say yes, why not? It hasn't really come up. I'm, it makes sense that if you can make something, if you're skilled enough or if you have a good enough role, you could figure out how to basically decode um, what something is. Any potions of resistance or haste? Or speed, I'm sorry. Uh, no. I don't have anything quite that complex. I mean, I used to stock things like that a little bit more when the greys were um, when the greys were in the city, but since they were banished, business has been um, well, dismal, to be frank. It's a shame so, here. A lot of things have changed for the worse since the greys lost their uh, their seats. Well, especially here in um, Old Norhaven, the people who cling to the old ways are kind of suffering a little bit. But I think the people in New Norhaven don't really realize the effect and the consequences of the actions that have taken place. So, yeah. Well, um, appreciate your time. Uh, yeah. Thank you. No problem. I hope it helps. Uh, please end the sickness that is killing my friends and family. <laughs> Cool. So I'll head out. Yeah. Should we leave? Yep. Yeah. He, you could tell that this guy is just kind of like he's tired. He's done. <laughs> as soon as we get away from the the building itself, I'll tell Kai like, we have a place for you to experiment, and mix to your heart's desire, but we need access to the Grey Banner. So <laughs> on the agenda right now, we need access to the manor, and we also need to get a sample of this vial. This antidote. We have the vial. Okay. 
vile obtained. Okay. But for now, we need to corner Cassian. my mother alone. Yeah, Cassian, are you are you ready? If not now, then when, my friend? Oh, I think the best approach is you go in first, and we'll follow behind. Some of us will take post near the entrance. Some of us will walk deeper in. Set a. Do we want to try to suss out her feelings on Cassian by talking about being friends of his? Are we overthinking this? I feel like yeah. Cassian just yeah. goes in there was, and then we just say, stay by the gates. It's probably best to just rip the band-aid. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I'm, I'm prepared. All right, let's do it, man. We'll support you. All right. You guys walk around for a bit. It's getting fairly late at this point, too, just so you guys know. You've been walking around doing quite a bit of stuff, um, so it's approaching evening at this point. Might play to our advantage. Less, less light. Um, you guys make it to those big iron gates. Are you passing the threshold? Can't see any yep. first one in. I'll head in first. <laughs> Uh, for the rest of you, wait here for my signal. Can I take a look in the garden? The... I'm not going to take anything. I just want to look. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. As you look in the garden, you see a ton of exotic plants. To the untrained eye, it just looks like a very exotic collection. Very eclectic um, growth. But Kai and Vicar, whereas everyone else just sees that, Kai, you see... Is that... Is that Frostweave? It's a plant that you know can do something for one of your potions. Vicar, as you guys are going through, um, you see Frost Blossom just growing near the, um, the uh, sorry, what's it called? The greenhouse. But Frost Blossom actually needs cold environments to bloom. And it looks like it's kind of approaching its budding season right now. Nice. Okay. Uh, I scan the garden. Are there any humans or humanoids? No. Uh, the greenhouse has been abandoned, it seems. Whatever your mom was doing in there, she finished up for the day and then went back inside. Is there a grand entrance of some sort? There is definitely a grand entrance of some sort. Knowing the Grey Keep uh, fairly intimately, there is only one way into this this place it is built like a fortress for a reason it's a it's the it's the alamo you know mm. you if you go in there with a gray god help you because you're the one that's trapped um so you walk up to the main gates you see two double doors on either side Give i would like moment. to believe that there's a large door knocker that looks like a wolf's head holding a ring in its mouth yep absolutely and I'll reach up and with a haunting echo, I knock twice. You give it a few seconds, and just as you go to reach for it another time, you hear a click, 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 click. <laughs> just a series of several different safety mechanisms and features being disarmed and uh, unlocked. And then the door. Mm -hmm opens and you see your mother and your father standing there josh you want to throw those pictures in the oh no. we get to see them mm -hmm. uh, lord dimitri gray looks fairly grizzled and um battle worn but he has a very commanding presence and a stern look about him even though he seems kind of tired and Katrina looks like she could still kick ass, even though she's dressed in a very nice uh, attire. You could tell that there's something more. As you look at her waistline, Cassie, and as you're taking in the fact that you're seeing your mother again for the first time, you see that she's not wearing a belt. That's the family whip, disguised to look like a belt, being held around her midsection. She looks at you, and she 
starts getting teary eyed and she makes a move towards you like she wants to hug you and then holds herself back and then she looks extremely confused and your father looks at you and says you've come back through the mask question mark they would know their son just by the appearance of i him. figured just want to make sure Cassian, in a very shaky voice, says, In shadows we stand, blades to the sky. Legacy of hunters beneath the moon's watchful eye. With honor we fight against the dark's cold face. Gray blood within our unyielding grace. Which, DM, you would know is the gray code. Yep. Yep. I do not speak to me the old magic I was there when it was written, you know? <laughs> um, so, yeah, she she looks extremely confused and conflicted. Your father looks confused, but resolute. Like, confused as if there's something that he's trying to process and figure out. Um, but he says, why... Why are you back after killing her? Why would you do this? You are wise beyond your years, father. You know I did not kill her. I I know it doesn't it doesn't make sense, but I saw it. And your mother steps in and says, "I saw it too. You killed her, but it." It doesn't make sense. None of it makes any sense. I'm... What happened? The same thing that has taken her has taken this city. It's time now for me to return and to fix what is wrong. But I cannot do that without the blood of the grace. I... I'm so confused. I don't... I don't understand what's happening. You can tell, um... Do an insight check for me, Cassian. For me. You're not gonna believe this, but it's a natural one. <laughs> this man knows you are nothing. <laughs> Yeah, you are shaken from seeing your parents to the point where you're not even trying to look beyond surface level stuff. You're just completely living in the moment because the moment is too terrifying to think about anything else. Um, their reaction towards you is not immediately hostile, but confused and perhaps angry and upset, but also desperately wanting their son back. It's a lot of very tough emotions. And just kind of stand there in awkward silence for a good while. Um, I, I... Can you give us more specifics about what happened? Aurora, Aurora left on one of her missions. And when she came back, I was not home. When I returned, I found her dead, slain by a blade. The blade was in my hands, but I am not the one who wielded it. The same sickness that overtook her has taken this city as well, and you can see it. I know you do. The greys have been driven out. I am a testament to that fact. But I have more information. We're beginning to understand where this comes from and what it is. Aurora was my best friend. And the pride of this city. We have to do her right. And the only way we can do that is with your help. And as I say we, I look back to the Iron Gate. These are my friends, and I speak up loudly. 
These are my family. These are greys. They took me when no one else would. They the brought me the here. Lost, the last and the lonely. There are no more lost, no more last, no more least and no more lonely than the ones that stand behind me now. I take but my mask like, off. But just like the greys, we're stronger together. And the only way that I am back here, the prodigal son returned home again, is because of them. We each have very unique talents and skills. And we each have a driving passion to fix what is wrong. But we are nothing without your help. Um, your mother... You can see something almost click in her head. And she runs forward and hugs you. And you can feel tears on your cheek as she's hugging you. But there's no sobs. It's just tear. And she squeezes you only the way that a mother can. And your father comes up behind her waits for the hug to be over and presents his hand for like a medieval handshake where you grasp the forearm. I'm assuming you take it. Absolutely. He grabs your arm and then pulls you in for a hug as well. And then your mother looks to the rest of the party and says, Thank you for bringing my son back to me. Something is wrong. It's like something is being lifted in my mind. I don't like this feeling. Feels forced. Please, everyone come inside. It is getting cold and it gets worse the darker it gets. I will... Take her up on her offer. Yeah, I look yeah. to the group and kind of like nod forward. I'll be the the last one in the rear. It is bitter cold out here. So you, you enter this very warm hearth. Uh, there are fires going. And is that a place where we want to stop? Or do we want to keep going a little bit further? I'm cool. I just continue. poured a brand new whiskey. We ain't stopping now, bro. <laughs> All right. So be it. So, you guys enter the home, and they direct you towards... Hey, Josh, can you pull up the map real quick? Uh, Josh is of the what? Here's the, map. Here's the, the map. map of the the manor, and they're going to be in the room with the, the round table, all the chairs, and the portrait. Hey, give me a second. I need to set that up. All right, I'll just describe the room until you have it ready, but just everyone be in foundry so you can see what you guys are going to see when you get there. Um, wait. The one with the table? Yep, the room to the left with the table and the Yeah, board. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, they present you to basically like what's a dining hall. Uh, Cassian, walking into your family home brings a whole whirlwind of emotions, but especially when they sit you down at this table, it symbolizes you being a gray again you know that this is the table where when you take your trials, you plan at this table as one of your, one of your courses um, of the, the think, thinking trials. What are they called again? Boop, 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 boop. Give me a second. Trials of knowledge. You sit at this round table with your fellow initiates and you devise plans for monster hunting. And as you guys all take a seat, uh, Katrina looks at the rest of you and says, We were allowed to stay here under the condition that we disowned our family name and lived as commoners, banishing us after everything that we have done to help the community would have started an uproar among old Norhaven. They came to our manor, the, the new Norhaven people, and they stripped it of whatever they could find to do with our past. They took most of the weapons, the books, 
the scrolls, whatever they could find, they took and either sold off or burned. They didn't get everything, though. And she looks down at her quote-unquote belt that Cassie and you guys, I already described to you what it is, but the rest of you start to notice that that is not a belt the more you look at it. It looks a lot like Cassian's whip, but way cooler. Um, they were not able to break into the vault because, as you well know, Cassian, we have not been able to get into our own vault for the last several hundred years. The, the uh, unbreakable enchantment has uh, been lost to us, the password. We, it was lost somewhere along the lines. Only two greys were ever allowed to know it at the same time because of the contents of the vault. And one unfortunate day, they both died at the same time. About two months after the... Uh, and she kind of hangs her head a little bit and then looks directly at you with like an I'm sorry expression. About two months after we sent you away, there was an attack on the Akar farms on the border of our city. Those who survived the encounter testify that they saw a humanoid-shaped creature, demonic in appearance that seemed to be made of a reddish-blackish ooze with grotesque offshoots coming out from its body. The creature ravaged farmlands, destroying some of the yield that they would have brought in, as well as killing numerous people. And within two days of the killings, the dead bodies had black sores appear all over them, completely taking over the bodies. Not long after this, these sores started to appear on civilian bodies near where the attack happened, and it quickly spread like a parasite to the rest of the area. After around four months of this sickness had spread to everywhere in the city and taken upwards of 1,500 lives, the Northern Light started to bless people, their homes, imports, exports, but it didn't seem to help. It was around that time that Seraphel came to the city, claiming that he was able to stop this plague with his blessing of his god. So he says, he preached that the illness was a result of the fiendish creature who carried an evil curse with it, and that the dead bodies had been taken by this creature and carried a highly contagious illness that spread through the air. There's those who go to the church are here of the illness for a price, and Seraphel and his followers took over the duty of blessing food and supplies that come into Norhaven. The infection started to decline in numbers. Many in the city see him as a hero, but mostly just those in New Norhaven. Us in Old Norhaven do not really appreciate him taking over like he has. But we are powerless to stop him at this point, so... As she explained the yeah. originating story, uh, Sid kind of, like, looks blankly at the room and walks to the corner and you can see him like muttering to himself can't really hear what he's saying you can tell he's he's certainly not his normal self and he is almost like half angry half uh confused between mutterances as you do this um she looks at cassian is something wrong with your friend? Nothing is wrong. <clears throat> I trust him. But he has a vested interest in this conflict as well. Part of the reason I am back with you is because of him. Among the others at this table, of course. But we are all, are all invested in this some way or another. They are the ones who have given me the courage to come back here again. <laughs> Mostly because of our shared trauma. He will be okay. The people at this table, although they have not been through trials, they are greys. By my decree. Well, why did you come back to Norhaven? Did you come for weapons? I'm afraid we don't have any to offer you. There's a way into that vault. 
And now that the three smartest greys to ever live are together, I'm sure we can figure it out. Excuse me. But besides that, we need information. We've recently solved conflict with a fiend. And we have a, let's call it an advisor in Penting, who sent us here. Would I know this advisor? Are you familiar with Alwyn of Penting? I believe he is one of the um, heads of the uh, city-states, correct? In uh, Thralandir. Although he is not my favorite humanoid to walk the face of this planet, he is certainly one of the smartest I've ever met. And I trust his word for the most part. I certainly trust his brain. We've created a bit of a power vacuum in our old city, Penting. Because we've slain the fiend. And there is no counterpart to the devil that walks. So now... We are going to have to correct that power balance. And the only thing that I know how to do is to kill devil and fiends. But I can't do that without my my name. And the only place that still holds anything resembling my name is this place. So I knew I had to come back here and consult with my people. I have an idea. You say you come seeking information and perhaps some way to correct this fiendish imbalance, and if you know us for anything, we are fiend killers. I suggest, if you would be okay with this, Cassian, because I do not know these people, but you know our creed, we take in the least, the lost, the last, and the lonely. We could initiate them in the gray process. They would have to go through the trials. And you could be their guide. I myself has passed through the Great Trials. And I myself have seen many, many others pass through the Great Trials. And I can tell you that I have never met any more fitting than those at the table today. If they're willing to take the creed, if they're willing to pass the trials, then I think this is exactly what we're looking for. She addresses the rest of you, not just Cassian at this point. I can promise you one thing. After taking these trials, you will gain experience and proficiency in dealing with fiendish nature creatures. We can help guide you. My husband and I have been helping generations of greys up until recently. I've been reduced to tending to the the gardens, but I still yearn for teaching and instructing. And um, at this point, your father uh, speaks and says, and I can't wait to get my hands back on to making potions and poisons again. It has been a long time since I have been able to create such things, and I would love and relish in teaching you how to do such things. Almost uncharacteristically of Sid, you see him kind of like pound the table with his fist, and in like a very deep tone, not his own voice, you hear him say, the creature, the red and black creature, describe it again. Uh, Cassandra, that's her name, right? Katarina. Katarina, thank you. Katarina, um... Looks at you a little bit surprised and says, the creature was described to have... I was not there, unfortunately, so I cannot give you a first-hand account, but second-hand account says that the creature was um, large, nearing eight and a half feet tall, perhaps larger. Some said that he was 15 feet tall. Some said that he was eight feet tall. It's hard to get an accurate read when people are in panic like that, but what is for sure is that it left a trail of bodies in its wake. Reddish, blackish ooze 
that took a humanoid form and almost seemed fiendish in nature. But having studied fiends and being very well versed in different monsters of all types, this did not sound like anything that I had come across before. It sounded completely unique to me. This is not a fiend, but people were describing it as such because that is what we usually get around here. Cassian would know this. The portal to the hells is not too far away from here. But it had offshoots like swords in their own right that would attack people as it went by. He would um, bite at people, ripping them in half or tearing off heads. Very bestial in nature, but it seemed well too coordinated to be, in my opinion, a mistake or a thing that happened by chance. This creature had some base intelligence. It was no mere bar guest. And Cassian, a bar guest, is a fiend that takes a very animalistic approach to things. Was he alone? From what I understand, yes. The damage was done, and then it left. And no one saw where he came from? No. That's the other strange thing. It's almost like it came out of nowhere, and then left as soon as it came, causing mass hysteria, and then eventually... Seemingly, it caused this plague. Starting from the dead bodies. And then Sid kind of like steps away from the table and walks in into the corner again. Pardon my friend's manners. I personally have felt like a gray since the moment I met Cassian. And I'd love to take you up on your offer. We would be more than happy to help walk you through these. And I personally can't think of many causes I'd rather stand for than this one. I'd also take the pledge. Sid steps back and he says, we're in. <laughs> That's so cool. That's that one line, we're in. <laughs> Alright. Father, this one will be a good pupil for you. I can already see that. There's drive in that. Sorry, my accent's a little too thick. There's <laughs> drive in that one there. There's something to be molded. I'm assuming Numat's in too. <laughs> aye, aye, Captain. Numat's wetting that worm. I appeal. <laughs> Mother and father, I know that in order to be a Grey, you must pass the trials. But these people are my people. These people are my family. They are Greys, and they will prove it to you. If you consider them Grey, Cassian, they are already Grey. You know that bloodline members of the family are always able to induct whomever they choose. The trials are just a way to, one, prove it for sure, and for two, give you some base experience learning how to do things that you might not be able to learn as easily otherwise. This is a more controlled environment to be in danger. We're going to need it. Are you ready to begin? Aye. 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 He walks over to a portrait of what definitely is a gray of some kind from ancient lore history. Cassian would know, probably could bore you with the details. Walks over to the portrait. That's my great-grandpappy. His... Yep, great-grandpappy. Runs his finger along the side of the portrait. You hear a click, and the whole thing goes to the side. And I'm going to say we should probably call it at this point. That was that was badass. That was fucking sick. I'd say. Yeah. No, it, it, <laughs> we're coming back to that. But now we're jumping right into the trials, baby. Two a.m. Cool. Yeah. Two nice. Two a.m. Two a.m. Yeah. That's awesome.
great story. A lot of horniness tonight. You guys are sick. I love that. It was so RP horny. Tonight. Lots of RP. Very he RP heavy session, and y'all killed it. Yeah. Yep. And we didn't yeah, come at one time, I don't think. Nope. Almost. No. We almost there, did, there, were, uh, there were several situations that I had prepared for for combat. Like, if you guys took the boat, that's two combats. If you if you took the uh well I, on the way there I on figured, the way back it's gonna be different figured. obviously but yeah um the the only way for you guys to avoid combats essentially for that was to teleport so it was like hey you want to spend money or do you want to not spend money you know depending on choices y'all made or where you chose to go what time there were combats we had set up but yeah there's still a ton of stuff that you can do. yeah is boat combat unique in D and D or is it just like land combat no oh, come on I can't I, wait I, to fireball the ship. Yeah, it's it's me. Of course, I'm gonna make it a little bit interesting. <laughs> yeah, there is a shove mechanic, but it takes your whole action, and it's kind of shitty. Shit. It's kind of shitty. Uh, if the if, if you have Very any spells, that, if you have any spells that allow you to actually push creatures, that's probably better. Like there's telekinetic shove. Uh, there's like thunder wave stuff like that would probably be a better bet. But if you cast thunder wave on a ship when you're on the deck, you know. That's a lot of wood. <laughs> That's a lot of wood. I'm pretty useless if we get on the water. You are, right, Pim. <laughs> I want to make a note for next session. My first action is coffee. going to be to call Cassie aside. I don't want to miss that. I'm going to send it in my private uh, DM as well, but just want to make a note of that to the party so we all maybe remember at the same time. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, speaking of next session, um, I know when I checked uh, last time, there was nobody that said no to... Uh... I will not be able to do next week. Okay. All right. There you go. I was just getting that out of the way now to see if there was a way. Yeah, I could do the week after, but I can't do next week. Yeah, I can't do next week either. Uh, let's see. Next week is 17th, and then the week after is Black Friday. Um, I know Thanksgiving Day, I will be at my parents. Reason I say that is I'm probably going to be there most of the week. That Friday, I'm not sure if, if we're shopping, but if we don't, I will be coming back or at least be here for the evening. I but never I, participate with Black Friday shenanigans. I don't so really either. We can put a vote. Cyber Monday, bro. I will. Um. Yeah, I'm. I will not be participating in Black Friday, but I'm not going to be there either. So, cool. so we can put it back okay. three weeks if we need to. It's holiday season. But we have yeah. an exciting place to pick up when we On do. A freaking cliffhanger, boys! What the yeah. heck? You boys are about to find find out what it means to be a gray in the first place. This is what everybody mm. needs to do if they want to get that title. I get to peg a demon. Hell yeah! Hell, Hell yeah, brother. brother! Hell yeah, brother! <laughs> It's going to turn into an incubine. Yeah. <laughs> Sheesh. Cassian could tell you that one of the trials, that one of the capstones of the trial is going to actually capture a creature without killing it. So if that's your way to do it, it's like, hey, you know, just roll to seduce it. Eggs, it up. We're all about to see a symbiote <laughs> dick. Get ready. Yeah. Do you get to roll a two in time for that? Yes, or... I have to roll dick size for the symbiote. It's separate. It's going to be a one again. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> you better not. <laughs> How about you roll right now, huh? Uh, fuck. Don't Say leave I us won't. on the cliffhanger. If you get, Say, if is you it, get a three, a D100. I have to roll no, a D100. No, not a D100. If you it's get like a, a D12, D12, right? Three ones. D12. D12. Wait, how do I How do I cancel? There we go. Okay. Is it 12? Yeah, yep. 12. D12. <laughs> I'm done. What was it? What was it? It's a two. <laughs> it's canon. It's canon. No way. No, no way. No. They rolled a two, I'm Tony. So done with it. Oh, it makes you quite as impressive. Sid okay, but combined, himself. but combined, that means you hit a three. Fuck yeah, baby. Facts, facts. Combined, you hit a three. Oh, sweet Jesus. <laughs> Says, yeah, baby, watch this. Is that flashy? Everything goes from this to this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's a grower, not a shower. He's barely a grower. <laughs> I don't think he's either at that point. <laughs> right. He's yeah, just there. You yeah. can blink and miss it. Yep. All right. Well.
I have pills for that. Session, guys. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah, excellent story arc. Sick ass job on those who put that together. Jacob yeah, that was yeah. fucking dope. Um, I had a great time derailing it in the beginning, though. Not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, we were prepared for a lot of derailment for this. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but even what do you mean combo? I mean, every everything that you guys did today was prepped for, except for the Seraphel thing. That was, it was an idea that we had, like, but we didn't actually prepare for it that much because you weren't supposed to be able to get to him. But then you rolled a thirty-five <laughs> on an intimidation yeah. check, so it was like, oh Oops. well. Oopsie. Yeah, I've been working on it for a long time. Um, I have I have a bunch of stuff written out for Cassian that is similar to this, but different in a lot of ways. And I sat down with Josh and Jacob and I said, like, make a good story, you know? So, yeah. I, and and basically everything that you're hearing tonight is all them. Like, I... That's cool. Um, the only thing that I did was I wrote up really quickly. Um, actually, li literally, like, during during the session, the, the Grey Oath, I thought it would be cool to greet my parents with something that was like kind of poetic um i use chat gpt bro i'm gonna keep it a buck with you yeah um, no 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 i use chat gpt but uh and then i think yeah everything else was like the the city design like the, you know the descriptions and all that stuff is just the two of them they're they're the wizards behind the window on that one my uh old oh, boss God. tried to connect with me once by asking me if I had heard about ChatGPT, and I was basically like, "Oh yeah, it's it's dumb as hell." <laughs> you should have you should have asked ChatGPT to write a response to it. Yep. <laughs> and he was like, he was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that he was like, like excited about it. I just like, he yeah. shot down that man's <laughs> dream. Yeah. Oh well. Anybody hop on CS? Yes. I could play a game. I do uh, one game. Yes. I do one game. All right, boys. Yep. Uh, Adios. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. Thanks, Josh. guys. Session, love you guys. Yeah, love excellent, you big time, bro. Excellent storytelling. Really hey, appreciate dude. it. I did not really expect good. It to go that cool. avenue when we sat down tonight, but it was very that was great. That was super dude. cool. Glad yeah, everybody gets one. Anyone who wants right. to chill, come over to Bang. Thanks, y'all. Peace. Adios. Right. See you guys. Mota Ben.